On day one, I spawned into the mountains as a diamond skeleton. Whoa, even with 10 hearts, I've got to be the most valuable bag of bones in the overworld. I wonder what kind of powers I have. But I didn't have any time to think about any potentially cool powers. A big, strong earth elemental rose out of the ground right in front of me. You, you are the skeleton that has defiled this land. Wait, what? That's impossible. I just got here. Your feeble excuses have no power here, you bony fiend. You should come with me before I'm forced to do anything drastic. No offense, buddy, but I feel like you don't have my best intentions at heart, so I'm getting out of here immediately. And I made good on my promise, turning and running as fast as I could. There was only one problem. Diamond skeletons can't actually run very fast. Okay, so I know super speed isn't one of my powers. Pretty soon, the earth elemental had caught up to me, and I had to stop. I was feeling totally out of breath. Wow, that was incredibly embarrassing, you sad little skelly. Come with me before you humiliate yourself even more. Sure, okay, just give me a second to catch my breath. On day two, the earth elemental ushered me back to a fortress high in the mountains, which looked like it'd be impossible to take over. This is the sanctum of sanctity. That'd be hard to say three times fast. Silent skeleton, you will stand before our ruler tomorrow and be given a fair trial for your crimes. What'll happen if I lose the trial? Oh, that's simple. You'll be executed. What? He didn't answer any more of my questions. Instead, he led me into the sanctum of sanctity and threw me into some kind of prison cell. Please, let me out. What about my human rights? You're a skeleton. Skeletons don't have human rights. And with that, he left and locked the door behind him. I was alone, or so I thought. There was actually a gold pig in the cell with me. Oink, oink. Hey there, bud. Name's Gary. Gary the gold pig. What are you in for? Hey, Gary. I'm Zozo. These guys trapped me in here for no reason. Have you been falsely imprisoned too? Well, not exactly. I was stealing, but I wasn't hurting anyone while I was doing it. That's better than nothing, I guess. These guys are huge jerks. We need to get out of here before we're tried and executed. Easier said than done, my friend. These walls are impenetrable, especially when you don't have any tools. Our conversation was interrupted when the Earth Elemental who had trapped me in here came back, opened the door, and stepped inside. Will you two be quiet? I can hardly think, let alone stand guard, while listening to your inane battling. How about instead, you... Without even thinking, I punched him, and that one punch completely destroyed him. Wow, that was amazing, Zozo. You're like some kind of one-punch man. I guess that's my first power, diamond hard punches. Let's get out of here before anyone else can find us. And that's exactly what we did. We escaped the Sanctum of Sanctity and ran off in different directions. On day three, I continued walking through the mountains. It was an exhausting process. I may have had those powerful diamond punches, but I still had absolutely sucky walking speed. All this walking is making me hungry. I wonder if I can find any food around here. I searched until I found an apple tree, which I knocked down some apples with another powerful diamond punch. Phew, these punches really take it out of me too. I should probably only use them in emergencies, just to be safe. I picked up the wooden blocks and the apples, eating them to replenish my hunger bar. I then continued my journey. Wait, what's that rattling sound? It almost sounds like bones. That's when I turned and saw a huge imposing figure. It was a mutant skeleton, and he was even bigger than I'd imagined. Oh my gosh, you're huge! It's nice of you to say, stranger. My name is Odokuro. It means rattling skull. What is your name? My name is Zozo. It means, uh, well, it means Zozo. Interesting. It's rare to see a skeleton brave enough to wander around here. And I've never seen one quite as shiny as you either. You must be skilled and powerful. Not as skilled and powerful as I'd like to be, sadly. That, my dear Zozo, I can help with. Follow me back to my dojo. Alrighty, Odokoro, lead the way. I followed Odokoro across the mountains, relieved to finally have a friend who could seemingly hold his own in a fight. From day four to day five, we arrived at Odokoro's dojo out in the bone dry Mojave Desert. What exactly does dojo mean, Odokoro? Is it like some kind of base? It's where I teach people to fight. You see, I am the greatest warrior in all of the overworld, and it is my privilege to teach others to fight as well as me, so they can fight for what they believe in. That sounds incredible, Odokuro! Please, Zozo, call me Sensei. It means teacher. 
And the first part of learning to fend for yourself is learning to put a roof over your head. Take this stone pickaxe and this stone sword. Make yourself a home in the desert. The harsh environment will make you hardy and strong. Yes, Sensei! My Sensei Orokuro gave me the stone sword and pickaxe, and I went off on my own, traveling until I found a nice spot in the Mojave to build my base. I mined up some stone and some sand that I could use to start building myself a cool little base. It wasn't much yet, but it seemed like a cool way to begin my training. As I stopped building to look back and admire my work, another earth elemental snuck up on me and started to attack. I knew you were an evil skeleton! You destroyed one of my fellow elementals, and now I'll destroy you! But I was ready to fight back. With my stone sword, I was able to beat the earth elemental, gaining enough XP in the process to level up and get stronger. I was bigger, a little faster, and now had 20 hearts instead of just 10. And what's this new power I feel coursing through my fists? Without even thinking, I turned and walked into a tree, blowing it up. Whoa, I guess my new wall demolition ability can knock down walls and apparently trees as well. That's awesome. Darn, I need to replant this tree now. From day six to day eight, I walked around the desert looking for new things to punch and test out my awesome strength. If this is how strong I am at the start of Sensei Otokuro's training, imagine how awesome I'll be as he trains me even more. During my wandering, I happened upon a familiar face too. It was Gary, the light-fingered gold pig I'd met inside the Sanctum of Sanctity. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Zozo, don't sneak up on me like that. I'm on edge enough as it is after what I've been through. Oh no, what's wrong, Gary? Are you okay? I was attacked by this crazy mutant enderman. If I didn't run as fast as I could, he would have destroyed me. You've got to be careful, Sozo. There are some real dangerous people out there. I know exactly what you mean. That's why I'm training with Sensei Otokuro, so I can get strong enough to fight off bad guys like that. Sensei Otokuro? Why does that name sound so familiar? Oh well, maybe I'll remember it later when I'm less stressed. And with that, Gary went on his way. Unsettled by the knowledge of how many dangerous creatures are out there, I returned to my sensei's base, ready for his next lesson. Climbing up the hanging ladders, I found him at the top of the dojo in his living quarters. You've done well against the Earth Elemental, Sozo. But to improve, you must face stronger opponents. There is a mutated bee out in the mangrove swamp, a formidable foe for someone of your strength. Go forth and destroy him and see your powers grow. From day 9 to day 10, I followed Sensei Orokuro's instructions and went out to the mangrove swamp, seeking to meet with and battle this mutated bee. He sounds like a tough customer, but I believe I'm ready to take him on. It didn't take me long to find him. His bright yellow and black stood out against the colors of the swamp. Buzz off, kid. I don't want to fight anyone. I left my fighting days behind me long ago. I hurt too many people. That's not who I am anymore. If you were a villain once, you're a villain now, mutated bee! Sensei Otokuro demands that I fight you! Otokuro? I haven't heard that name in years! Well, kid, if you want to fight, I'll give you the fight of your life! The mutated bee fought me, and he was every bit as tough as Sensei Otokuro had said. I did manage to defeat him in the end, but by then, I barely had any hearts left. I, I can't rush my training. If I do, I think I'm really gonna get hurt. On my way out of the swamp, I ran into none other than Gary the Gold Pig. Oh hey, Zozo, you're not looking so hot, buddy. Maybe take this health potion. Eh, I stole it from some guy. I drank the health potion Gary gave me and breathed a sigh of relief as my health replenished itself. Thanks, Gary, you're a lifesaver. Sensei Otokuro will be pleased to see that I'm doing okay. Here's that name again. Gosh, where did I hear it? Uh, guess I'll let you know if it comes back to me. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to the dojo of Sensei Orokuro, eager to tell him about how well I'd done in the battle with the mutated bee. Your power grows, Zozo, but you still have much to learn. That being said, I see the potential for true strength in you, but a true warrior feels no fear. Go first into the darkness to make fear your ally, then return to the mangrove swamp, find the lethal swamp pig clan, and destroy every last one of them. Destroy a whole clan? Isn't that a uh, little harsh, Sensei? Never, ever question my teaching, Zozo. Perform the task. Your Sensei wills it. Feeling doubtful, but knowing that my Sensei must know best, I found the darkest darkness I could find, a mining cave. I explored the dark, worrying about what could lurk behind every corner. However, while down there in the dark, I discovered something awesome, a dusty old chest containing a few pieces of iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. The sensei really is always right. I equipped the sword and the armor pieces, then left the cave. 
but just as I was about to exit, I was stopped in my tracks by another Earth Elemental. You won't escape this time, you skeleton fiend! I'm really getting tired of you guys! The fight didn't last long. With my new power and new iron sword, I defeated him in no time. From day 13 to day 15, following Sensei Otokuro's instructions, I went back to the mangrove swamp and searched through until I found a small settlement full of pigs. This must be the Swamp Pig Clan. They don't look like a gang of lethal warriors, they just look like peaceful little pigs. What's going on? I decided to investigate further, venturing into the settlement and approaching the largest of the Swamp Pigs. Excuse me, sir, but are you the head of the legendary Swamp Pig Warrior Clan? That just made him laugh. Warrior Clan? We're a clan of peaceful farmers, living off the fat of the land. We don't know the first thing about fighting. I have no idea where you got that from. Then I'm... No, this isn't right. I'm sorry for bothering you, Mr. Swamp Pig. Confused and worried, all I could do was leave the settlement as quickly as I could, making a beeline back to the Mojave Desert. Sensei Otokuro has some explaining to do. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to Sensei Otokoro's base and told him everything that had happened. He was furious with me. You dare go against my orders after I explicitly told you not to question me? But Sensei, they weren't warriors. I am no longer your Sensei. Be gone from the dojo, Zozo. I cannot teach someone who doesn't respect and honor my judgment. I was devastated, but I had no choice but to leave. I guess that I just wasn't cut out to be an awesome warrior in the end. I might have just been doomed to be a sad, slow diamond skeleton forever. When I got back to my base, Gary was waiting for me. Zozo, Zozo, I remember where I heard that name before, Sensei Urokuro. He's not even my sensei anymore, Gary. There's no point. But it was the mutant Enderman. When he attacked me, he said, Sensei Otakura will be so pleased. He must have been on his orders. Wait, Otakura has other students, and they're out there attacking people? Oh no, I need to go back to the mangrove swamp. I ran back to the Swamp Pig Clan settlement as quickly as I could, but it was already too late. Otakura was there, and he'd already destroyed all of them. You monster! It's better to be a monster than a weakling, Zozo. My best students understand this. You are but a naive little fool. What, it's foolish to not want to attack innocents? There are no innocents, Zozo. Only practice. I'll give you one chance to decide. Are you with me or against me? I could never be with you or any of your horrible students. I pulled out my iron sword and ran towards him to attack, but he knocked me out cold in a single strike. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up, dazed and aching, in the ruins of the Swamp Pig settlement. Otokuro hadn't left a single survivor. That monster, I feel so terrible for ever helping him. I can't believe all his students have been terrorizing the overworld, and I was almost one of them. As I was making my way through the swamps, I saw Gary the Gold Pig emerging from the distance and trotting towards me. Zozo, thank goodness you're alive. I had no idea you were up against such terrifying enemies. The world is even scarier than I thought. But it doesn't have to be, Gary. Come back to my base with me. I'll build you a room, and we'll start working on a battle plan to take down these evildoers once and for all. You know what? You have a point, Zozo. I've spent my whole life stealing from people. Now, I want to do something right. Let's go, buddy. I went back to my base in the Mojave Desert with Gary and built a new building for him to live in. It felt good to finally be allied with someone whose worst crime was stealing potions and not destroying whole clans of innocents for fun. From day 23 to day 26, I decided to investigate the mountain some more and see if I could track down any of Sensei Otokoro's other sadistic students. If they were out here destroying settlements in the overworld, then they needed to be stopped at once. While I was exploring, it didn't take me long to overhear a cry for help from a passing mushroom summoner. Please spare me, kind skeleton. There's a mutant zombie right behind me. Destroy it, I beseech you. I don't know what a beseech is, but you'd better get behind me. Sure enough, there was a vile, brainless mutant zombie coming after the poor summoner. I leapt in to defend the innocent mushroom summoner with a swing of my sword, but the shuffling undead was far stronger than I'd ever expected. The mutant zombie was tough, and he got a few powerful hits on me. I swung back with my diamond skeleton punches, and while it took a few more than usual, I had soon knocked his health right down. You can come back out now. Oh, thank you. Please help yourself to this. It's the latest of my horticultural findings, a fungus imbued with magical properties. Um, thanks. 
I ate the mushroom and could suddenly feel myself getting stronger. I now had 50 whole hearts. I could shoot energy blasts from my hands. Wow, now this will be fun, guy. From day 27 to day 31, I roamed the mountains some more. The encounter with the mutant zombie was playing on my mind. Where had that horrid undead creature come from? Was it connected to my nefarious former sensei in some way? I got distracted by a flock of sheep that looked like they'd lost their shepherd. Or that perhaps something bad had happened to them. Hey there, little guys. It's not safe for you all to be up here on the mountainside. You better come back to my base where you'll be safe. If we come across your owner, I'm sure he'll be glad I got you guys to safety. So I headed back to my base and got to work settling up a pen for the sheep. Once I was done, Gary was excited to show me something. Come check it out, Zozo. I built us a brand new storage room. Now we've got somewhere to keep all our loot. I mean, uh, oops, old habits. Uh, I mean, all the equipment we can use to bring the fight to Sensei Otakuro. Speaking of Otakuro, within his dojo in the Mojave Desert, my former teacher was conferring with one of his deadliest students. Sensei, I have followed your teachings and laid waste to another settlement. Their souls are now forever cursed to have fallen at my hand. That will make them perfect candidates to join the ranks of your undead army. Good work, apprentice. You've been more loyal than that cowardly skeleton. And I have a new task for you. Bring me the diamond skull of Zozo! From day 32 to day 35, I decided to backtrack to the fortress high in the mountains. I had realized that those earth elementals who had captured me might have only done so because they thought I was working for Sensei Otakuro. After all, one had called me evil when he saw I was carrying out Otakuro's commands. But I figured I would need allies. Me and my gold pig pal weren't going to be able to take him down alone. Look over there! It's the diamond skeleton working with Otakuro! Get him! Whoa, hold on guys! I'm not here to fight! It was too late. An earth elemental was coming straight towards me. We clashed swords. I had to hold off from using my diamond hard punches and energy blasts. I needed to convince them that I meant no harm. Listen to me. I'm not following Otokoro's teachings anymore. He's a barbaric, irredeemable monster. What took you so long to realize? Don't be mean. I was tricked. Then you should talk with our boss. The earth elementals brought me before their leader, a wise old illusioner. You have renounced Otokoro's vile ways. Good then perhaps you'll be the one to put a stop to his reign of terror. I'll take him down. He's hurting innocent people, and he's got to be stopped. I must convene with my earth elementals. I can provide you with the means to stop Otakuro, but first, we must decide if you are trustworthy. Now go! From day 36 to day 39, I didn't want to waste any time waiting on the illusionist's decision. I needed to get stronger in the meantime. I decided it was time to upgrade my armor, so I went searching the mines for the remaining pieces to complete the set. And boy oh boy, I didn't just find what I was looking for, but struck a mother load of diamonds too! It was almost like being a diamond skeleton up to draw me to where they were hidden underground. I could sense them without even realizing it. After I had gathered up the diamonds, ready to craft some neat stuff with them later, Gary excitedly called me back to base. Check it out, Zozo! Look what I stole! I mean, acquired while you were gone! It was a special gong of weakening. After striking it, it weakens all enemies around me for seven seconds. But before I had a chance to try it out, an armored mountaineer approached my base. You're Zozo, right? I'm a messenger. I've been sent by the Illusioner. He's ready to speak with you now and request your presence back at the Earth Elemental Fortress. From day 40 to day 43, I made the long trek back to where I'd last met the Illusioner. But as I approached the fortress, I immediately noticed something was wrong. The diamond skeleton was here. Tell me what you told him, or suffer in the name of Sensei Otokuro. It was the mutant Enderman. It must have been one of Otokuro's other students. He was turning the place upside down, battling with the Earth Elementals as they desperately tried to defend the fortress against his attacks. But his training, he'd clearly been following Sensei Otokuro's brutal teachings, and they were no match for the mutant Enderman. I ran over to the Illusioner as quickly as I could. Illusioner, quick! We need to do something! Zozo, no! Drawing you out is what Otakura wants. My elementals will die before they give away your location. But we must flee before Otakura's student realizes you're here. From day 44 to day 49, I hurriedly escorted the Illusioner back to the safety of my base. He seemed upset about the attack on his fortress, but I didn't really know what to say to comfort him. Once we'd made it back, he sat me down to reveal his decision. I have opted to trust you with this, Zuzu. 
I believe your remorse for serving Odakuro to be genuine. I know all too well how deceptive he can be, which is why I will impart to you this knowledge. There is a way we can stop him, but it requires a weapon known only as the Destroyer, and to rebuild it will be no easy task. I can guide you through the first steps, but to complete it requires secrets I do not possess. Well, where can I find the rest of the steps to build the Destroyer? Patience, for now, here's how to get started. I followed the Illusioner's instructions written on the blueprint to the letter, making sure I had done everything I could right now to make a start on the Destroyer. It was kind of nice having him help me along, almost like having a new sensei who wasn't as evil as Sensei Otokuro. Once I'd done all I could, that was when the Illusioner told me about an ancient book of secrets that contained instructions for finishing the Destroyer. It was lost somewhere in the mangrove swamp, so I began to make my way over there as fast as my slow skeleton legs would carry me. From day 50 to day 53, I searched high and low in the stinky mangrove swamp for anywhere that might be housing the Book of Secrets. I was expecting to find an old temple or an abandoned cave, but there was nothing of the sort anywhere around. Eventually, I had to change up my approach. I didn't know where to look, but one of the locals might. I struck up a conversation with the first person I met, a royal guard. Book of Secrets? Sorry, geezer, no clue. Nobody's seen it in a dog's age. Been lost in the swamp. Great, that's super helpful. I don't suppose anyone knows what's written in it or how to rebuild the destroyer to stop Sensei Otokoro? Otokoro? Blimey, mate! He's a tough customer! You know he once commanded an army of mutant undead? He did? That's horrible! Yeah, it was! Otokoro believed in being the strongest bloke around, and he trained himself up a nasty gang of blighters. He never wanted them to be tougher than he was, so he kept some stuff to himself. Then if any of his pupils ever croaked, he'd use necromancy to bring them back and make them fight for him as undead zombies. But eventually, he crossed the wrong fella. Some real brain box who built a device that would destroy Otokuro. That's why it's called the Destroyer, see? Wow, I never would have guessed that. Well, Otokuro got wind of what was being made to defy him and tried to wreck him. But it blew up in his face and took out a lot of his undead army. Rumor has it, he's been trying to build his forces back up ever since. I still had no clue where the Book of Secrets was hidden. I didn't know the Mangrove Swamp well enough to find it. And without the book, I couldn't complete the Destroyer just yet. So instead, I headed back to base. From day 54 to day 57, I was making my way back to my base, taking a longer detour through the mountains, just in case any more of Sensei Orokuro's students were causing trouble nearby. Little did I realize, one of them was much closer than I'd anticipated. Suddenly, the mutant Enderman burst out of the shadows and attacked me, wielding all the fury and fear of Otakuro's twisted teachings. There you are, the one who ran away. At last, I shall defeat you and bring that diamond skull of yours to my sensei as a trophy. I had no choice but to fight back, but I couldn't land even a single energy blast on the evil Enderman. He would just teleport out of the way, and each blast would miss. Then he started using his special abilities, like picking up blocks, throwing them at me, and cloning himself. I couldn't risk being captured and brought back to Sensei Otokuro, or worse. So, I had to dash. I luckily made my escape. Meanwhile, within his lair, Sensei Otokuro was summoning the latest addition to his undead army. By my hand, I command these ancient bones to rise, return to the land of the living, and follow my teachings, mighty skeleton vanguard! From day 58 to day 62, battered and exhausted, I was relieved to finally make it back to the safety of my base. After a brief nap to regain my strength, Gary, my gold pig pal, was eager to show off his latest, definitely not stolen, project. Hey, hey, Zozo! Check it out, a brand new furnace for us. Now we can really turn up the heat on old Okuro, eh? Get it? Yeah, I got it, Gary. Great job. The base was looking great now, but I was concerned after facing the mutant Enderman and barely making it away alive. We needed somewhere well defended, so I gathered up lots of sandstone to build a bunker out of it, although it was tricky because the sand kept falling on my head. I eventually gathered enough and started building the bunker. Speaking of defense, I thought it was about time I defended myself a little better too. My old iron armor had done the trick until now, but it was useless against Sensei Otokuro's stronger students. So I headed into the mines and let my diamond skeleton senses guide me to more diamonds. I had plenty in my inventory now, enough to craft a new diamond sword and a matching pickaxe, plus a full set of diamond armor. Since Otokuro was after my skull, I thought protecting it was my best option. 
And there is nothing more stylish than a diamond skeleton in full diamond armor. From day 63 to day 66, I spoke with the illusioner about how I hadn't been able to find the Book of Secrets. Hmm, most troubling news. I think I shall have to accompany you. I may know where we can look. So, I followed his lead, and we ended up at the edge of an area I'd never seen before, the Nether Waste. What the heck? I could have sworn this place wasn't here before. It has always been here, but not all have the means to see. These wastes are shrouded by a complex illusion. But you can lift it, right? I can, but it will take time. Casting illusions is my specialty. Removing them is much harder, especially when they have been cast by another. So we can't get there? I will attempt to break the illusion, and then we should be able to access the nether wastes. Well, okay. In the meantime, I guess I'll just wait. Patience, Zozo. I will need you at my side to defend me while I break the illusion. Nether wastes may not be the only thing being hidden. From day 67 to day 70, the illusioner was hard at work, lifting the illusion that was stopping us from getting to the nether waste. But something seemed to be bothering him while he was working. Zozo, I think there is something wrong. I sense a foul presence afoot in the mountains. One of Odakuro's undead, but far more powerful than his zombies. You stay here. I'll go and take care of whatever it is. I made my way towards the mountains, and it didn't take long for me to come across what the problem was. It was the skeleton vanguard. After losing my last tangle with one of Sensei Otokuro's minions, I wasn't feeling confident I could best this creature. But perhaps there was a way I could reason with it. Old bones, old bones. Say, I know you're a little confused right now. I guess that must happen when you're brought back from the dead. But the one who brought you back, he just wants to use you. Believe me, he did it to me too. But us skeletons need to stick together. New bones, new bones. The skeleton vanguard lunged at me, disoriented. I had to hold back my punches and energy blasts. There was still a chance I could convince him to abandon Otakuro. If only I could get him to hold still. Wait, maybe he will respond to the gong. I struck it as hard as I could, and the skeleton vanguard was stunned. And it gave me a chance to talk to him. Listen, I don't want to hurt you. Otokuro might have brought you back, but to him, you're just an undead soldier. I promise if you help me, we can take that monster down and set you free. Then your old bones can rest. Old bones, old bones. Slowly, the skeleton vanguard seemed to calm down. I had done it. He was now on our side. From day 71 to day 74, I was heading back to the base with the skeleton vanguard, only to see something terrible as I approached. The mutant enderman had found my hideout and was ransacking it. I hadn't even been able to finish the defensive bunker, and now Otokuro's star student of slaughter was destroying huge portions of my home. I tried to use my gong of weakening to stop him, but instead, he attacked me and stole it. Thanks for the gong, loser. I retreated and hid in a part of the base that was still intact. And before long, the mutant endermen seemed to get bored and leave. I was feeling awful, worried that I'd never be able to beat the mean mutant endermen. And if I couldn't stop one of his weaker students, then I had no chance of stopping Sensei Otokuro. Zozo, buddy, you still in there? You can come out now. Gary told me that he and the skeleton vanguard had been busy rebuilding the base while I'd been feeling sad. I had made an effort to refortify the place against any future attacks and they'd done it to try and cheer me up. I had to admit, it made me feel a little better. A little did I know, Sensei Otokuro was almost finished working on his undead army. I have almost amassed my forces once more, and once my prized pupil discovers the location of the Diamond Skeleton's hideout, soon we will march. My zombies and I will subjugate the overworld. From day 75 to day 78, the illusioner returned to the base. He approached me to talk about how clearing the illusion had gone. Whoever cast that illusion over the nether waste was certainly remarkably powerful. You think it could have been Otakuro? No, he only seeks the power to destroy, not to conceal. Perhaps the original architect of the destroyer was responsible. He might have cast the illusion to keep his book of secrets hidden. Were you able to clear it? Mostly. But you should be able to reach the nether waste and find the book. First things first, though, I want my gong of weakening back. I set off to hunt down the mutant enderman. I wasn't going to let him get away with my stuff. And if I could take him down, then I could prove to myself that I was strong enough to stop Otokuro too. From day 79 to day 84, I spotted the mutant enderman in the Mojave Desert and immediately launched an energy blast. 
With his back to me, he didn't see it coming and couldn't teleport out of the way. Caught off guard, I landed a hit, but it only angered him. You won't make me look weak in front of my sensei! He leapt at me, and we fought. Without my gong of weakening, it was hard to gain an advantage over the Enderman. Just when I thought I was about to land a strike with my sword, or a powerful diamond punch, he'd zip out of the way, and I'd miss. Suddenly, he threw blocks back at me and knocked me far back with a powerful attack. Then, a sudden surge of power overtook me. I got way bigger than before and even had a hundred hearts. Catching both myself and the mutant Enderman by surprise, I suddenly fired a new special laser attack. The beam struck him right in the center and he couldn't get out of the way quick enough. With a few more hits to finish him off, Sensei Otokuro's right-hand Enderman was defeated. I grabbed my gong of weakening, glad to finally have it back, and the mutant Enderman had also dropped something, a special key. Ah, better hang on to this, it might come in handy later. From day 85 to day 89, I made my triumphant way back to base. To my surprise, Gary had gone out of his way to finish up working on the defensive bunker. Thought we could get the last of it done, now we'll be safe if there's any more trouble. Well, the mutant Enderman won't be coming back here anytime soon. That's great news, Zozo. Now that I had my gong of weakening back, I decided to also head back to the nether waste. Sure enough, the illusion blocking the area was now gone, and I searched for the Book of Secrets. Sure enough, there it was, waiting for me at an altar. But so were a horde of mutant creepers. Using my weapons, I was able to defeat the diabolical monsters, and then I was free to grab the Book of Secrets. Now I had the last thing I needed to complete the Destroyer and put a stop to Sensei Otokuro's schemes. From day 90 to day 94, using the Book of Secrets, I started making the reinforced handles and the warped fungus which gives the Iron Destroyer that extra power. When holding it in hand, I felt its power flowing through me. At long last, I'm strong enough to take on my old sensei and right the wrongs I helped him create. But on my way out of the nether waste, I saw my oldest enemy standing right in front of me. It was my former sensei, Otokuro. Hello there, former student. It's been too long since we've seen one another, skull to skull. That's because your other students have been trying to take my skull. You shouldn't take such a thing personally, Zozo. There are bumps on the road for every journey of training. They're there to test our strength. I've seen the way you fight, how you've bested all my other students. You have impressed me, Zozo. Why not resume your teaching with me? You can reach levels of strength you've never even imagined. I'll never be your student, ever again! And I don't need anything you could teach me! I'm powerful enough to beat you already! I wouldn't be so sure. Before I could move, Otokura fired a plasma blast at me! And that blast paralyzed me! I was frozen in place! And while I was unable to move, Otokura approached and stole the destroyer from me! Foolish decision, Zozo! I'll let you live this time, just so you can languish in your shame! But next time I see you, rest assured, I will destroy you completely. And with that, he ran back into the depths of the nether. From day 95 to day 97, I was at first alone in the nether waste. I had to summon up all my willpower to overcome the paralyzing spell. As soon as I had, I left the nether waste for the mountains. I needed to team up with the illusioner and his elementals as quickly as I could. However, when I arrived, the fortress was in ruins, and the elementals were all gone. Without the destroyer out there, Otokuro felt comfortable unleashing his full power. There was no one who could stop him. The only survivor was the illusioner, and even he was on the edge of his demise. Zozo, it's too late for me. Don't waste your time. Get the destroyer back, and finally surpass your old sensei for the good of the overworld. The illusioner was gone. Feeling terrible, I set off towards my base. On day 98, I arrived back at my base, only to find it decimated, just like the fortress in the mountains. Only Gary the Gold Pig was still alive. Zozo, that monster! He came here and destroyed everything. He even destroyed the skeleton vanguard. That may be a thief, but that bony buddy stole my heart. We can't let him get away with this. We can't stop him, Gary. He has the Destroyer, and the Destroyer is the only weapon that can destroy him. Hence the name! Zozo, take it from the expert. You can get it back from him. You just need to go to his dojo and steal it. Wow, you're right, Gary. All these different people I've learned from all this time, and I didn't even think to learn from you. 
On day 99, I arrived at my old sensei's dojo, but I couldn't exactly walk in. If I was going to steal that destroyer, I needed to use the element of surprise. I quietly searched around the dojo until on the second floor, I found a pedestal with a keyhole in the middle. Wait, my special key, this must be what it unlocks. I turned the key and in the middle of the dojo, a secret floor dropped down into the basement, but it was locked. I snuck in, Otakuro had no idea I was in there. Now I just need to get the destroyer back. I turned and saw Otokuro standing right there, but with his back turned to me. This was my chance. I snuck up behind him, and using techniques I'd learned from Gary, I stole back the destroyer. Otokuro turned to me with shock. Zozo, what have you done? I've leveled the playing field, sensei. On day 100, I was facing off against the sensei, ready for the final battle. You were always such a disappointment, Zozo. Your skills showed such great promise, but you could never follow orders. How can you expect to learn from me now? There's nothing I want to learn from you. I'm no longer the student, Otakuro. Now, I'm the master. I knew that the longer I fought him, the more chance he'd have to turn the tables. He shot his plasma blasts, but they no longer had the same effect as before. I knew I needed to end this quickly, once and for all. I summoned all my power into one final strike with the destroyer. I ran towards him, putting every ounce of my power into the strike. Boom! Otokuro exploded into bones. The evil had finally been defeated, and the student truly had become the master. On day one, I spawned into the amaranth field as a blinged out diamond monkey. Ooh, ah, I'm so shiny, even if I am a little baby monkey. I hopped around and started exploring the fields. It was so cool and colorful. It seemed like this was going to be a really fun adventure. Until a huge, terrifying creeper spider brood mother started crawling towards me. I'd never seen anything like it. Oh my goodness, you're certainly interesting. I don't think you're being sincere. You don't think I'm interesting at all, do you? You actually think I'm strange and frightening. What? No, you're putting words in my mouth. Well, unlucky for you, I am strange and frightening. And so are my many children. You have children? Yes, 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 so many. And within 100 days, we will rule the world and every other creature will be destroyed. Starting with you, you glittering little monkey! Creeper Spider Broodmother fired a powerful exploding fireball at me that blew up the ground near my feet. I was nowhere near powerful enough to fight back. All I could do was run away as fast as I could. That Broodmother didn't seem nice. I don't want it and it's young to rule over the world, so I better find a way to stop it before it gets out of hand. On day two, I began to explore more of the amaranth fields, taking in the sights and trying my best to learn my way around this interesting, beautiful biome. Hopefully, without running into any more trouble from the broodmother creepy spider or her creepy crawly kids. While I was roaming around, I checked and noticed I had 10 hearts. Not tons of health, so I'd have to be careful not to take too much damage. Lucky for me, I found some apples growing on a tree. Out of reach for ordinary chumps walking around on two legs. But with my diamond monkey agility, I was able to climb up into the branches and grab that sweet fruit. Suddenly, while I was enjoying my apples up in the tree, I heard a telltale hissing coming from below. I peered out and was met with the sight of a creeper down below. There you are. The broodmother said there was a lost little diamond monkey out here alone. Go away. I don't want any trouble. Then you never should have wandered up that tree. You're in the perfect spot for some exploding. The creeper started getting ready to blow. I looked around, trying desperately to find an escape route. But there was no tree close enough for me to jump to. I tried to distance myself from the impending blast and braced myself for the loud boom. When all of a sudden, nothing happened. I looked back down and someone had attacked the creeper, stopping it exploding at the last minute. A phantom fox. You, come with me quickly. More will be on the way, so we have to get out of here. Say no more. On day three, the phantom fox led me through the amaranth fields after saving me. We walked quite a distance from where the creeper had found me before finally arriving at a campfire in a clearing. We'll be safe here. Perhaps now we can be acquainted. I am Philo of the phantom fox clan. Nice to meet you. My name's Zozo. It's been a while since the amaranth fields have played host to a diamond creature. This can only be a good omen though. We will need all the help we can get to defeat the broodmother. Oh yeah, I had a run-in with her. 
Not a fan, I'll tell you that much. Philo and I were soon joined by another, a wise old wind serpent. He explained more about what was going on. The creatures of the Amaranth fields used to live in perfect harmony. But the brood mother sought to disrupt all of that and use her spiderlings to control the entire world. We must unite and stop her. Well, I'm no parenting expert, but I don't think she should be making her kids take over the world with her. I'll do what I can. Then welcome to our resistance, Zozo. You are one of us. Philo will guide you. There is much to be done. From day four to day five, Philo and I went off together to search for an ideal location to set up shop. We'd need a base, a place to call home, if we were going to reunite the creatures of the field and put a stop to the broodmother's schemes. So I knocked down some trees and gathered up some wood. I had enough to craft a wooden pickaxe, and then we went off looking for something stronger, stone. Before long, I had gathered up enough stone to make a full set of stone tools. There was even enough left over to make a snazzy stone sword. Now, I could defend myself if any more mean mobs showed up. Turned out, that was just about to happen. It was while I was building the first few rooms of our base that an icy creeper snuck up on me. It must have just come across us by chance, but it startled me. I panicked and wildly swung my sword, taking the icy creeper down, but looking a little clumsy when I did. Afterwards, Philo came over to talk. Not exactly elegant, are you? Here, if you're going to swing that thing around, let me show you the proper technique. That would be amazing. But first, I'm hungry. Do you have anything I could eat? Oh, fine. Here are some apples. Now, follow me. Philo imparted some phantom fox wisdom to me and taught me how to fight. I could feel myself getting stronger. I now had 30 whole hearts. Philo even taught me a brand new power too, a freezing ice blast. Ice powers. It makes sense, seeing as I'm so iced out. From day six to day eight, Philo sent me off to the cherry blossom forest to gather resources. We needed some wood for the roof of our base, and there were far more trees here than the amaranth fields. Plus, he said I'd need to learn my way around the world if I was going to help the other creatures stop the broodmother. But while I was on my travels, chopping down trees and minding my own business, I noticed someone in a spot of trouble nearby. A stranger looked like they were being attacked by a basalt snake. Away with you, beast, unless you want me to rock the house down. The stranger must have been a geomancer. Who else would make such an awkward rock pun? As he ran away, I drew my stone sword and decided to help out. This was it, my first taste of combat. I attacked the basalt snake. It was a slippery enemy, dodging out of the path of my swings and then lunging towards me when it found an opening. I was barely able to leap out of the way in time, saved at the last second by my monkey agility. At last, I saw an opening and took my chance, landing the winning strike. Not bad going there, lad. You're clearly not one of the broodmother's laggies. Tell you what, you fancy giving me a hand, taking care of some of that creepy spider's creepy spawn? Sounds good to me. That ought to slow her down. From day nine to day 10, I went with the geomancer deeper into the cherry blossom forest, looking for a nest where some of the creeper spider broodmother's children were hiding, waiting for the command to take over. We were trying to sneak up undetected, but suddenly we were ambushed by one of the creeper spiderlings. It was way smaller than the broodmother, but it was still creepy. Mama said you can't be here. I'm gonna tell on you. I fought as hard as I could, but the creeper spiderling was far too tough. Every time I tried to corner it, it would scuttle out of reach. I had no choice but to retreat. I was a little disheartened. If I couldn't take on one of the broodmother's offspring, what chance did I stand against her? Don't be so hard on yourself, lad. Life, as I've experienced, it's a rocky road. Don't you give up now? Gee, thanks. You need a place to stay? Come back to my base. From day 11 to day 12, the geomancer and I made our way back to the base in the amaranth fields. Straight away, I got to making a storage room with plenty of space for all the resources I gathered. I then went on to work on the geomancer's room. I added a floor to my base, which gave him plenty of space to practice rocking out if he needed to. Well, this is all just too kind, Zozo. I've got no coin nor any token to give you as thanks, lad. But here, let me use my powers to really rock this joint. The geomancer really was stone cold brilliant. He built an entire smelting place outside and a new storage room just to say thanks for letting him stay. This was amazing. It really helped improve the base. Thanks to him, things were really coming along. We even got to talking about the broodmother and why she was so set on taking over the world. 
I've been studying the fauna of this place for quite some time. It really is fascinating. All the creatures here are bestowed with great power. The brood mother has the power of dominance, the will to take control of everything. But what's interesting is there is a creature made to be the embodiment of good and selfishness. A diamond monkey! Wow, so you're saying I might be able to defeat her? Zozo, lad! I'd say you've got a better chance than anyone! Later, I paid a visit to a nearby mine and dug up some iron ore. Now I could put that brand new furnace to good use! I turned the ore into some iron ingots, then smelted those with iron replacements for my sword and pickaxe. While I was gone, the geomancer placed down some fences to make a sheep pen. I lured some sheep in to make a farm. From day 13 to day 15, I spoke to Philo about what I could do to get stronger. He suggested that I should head off on a small journey to do some hands-on training. You're sure about this? Of course, you're a diamond monkey, and that means you're the living embodiment of all good. And being good means banishing evil, so go do some banishing. I headed back to the Cherry Blossom Forest, although I wasn't exactly sure how I was meant to banish evil. That seemed like more of an ongoing life goal than a simple training exercise. I didn't get too much time to think about it though, before I was confronted by another angry creeper. Hey, my twin brother was sent to catch a diamond monkey like you for our master the broodmother. And he never made it back. Yeah, my fandom fox friend sort of destroyed him. He did what? Oh, you're so gonna pay. The creeper came at me. I leaped back to a safe distance in case it exploded. I used my diamond monkey reflexes to stay out of range of the creeper's explosive radius, then hopped in close when it was safe to deal some damage with my iron sword. Finally, I was able to finish him off. But that wasn't all. The defeated creeper dropped a health potion, which gave me a whole 60 hearts when I drank it. The whole encounter had given me the experience to teach myself a brand new move too, the knockback punch. From day 16 to day 19, I ventured out further and came across the deep canyons stretching as far as the eye could see. I had to be careful traveling the higher ground. One wrong step and I'd have a really nasty fall. But it was while traversing my way down to the lower depths of the canyons that I happened to stumble across something pretty unexpected. It was an old journal that somebody must have dropped. I picked it up and took a look, reading some of what was written inside. It started happening much sooner than we thought. The bad needs good to counter it. It can grow and grow. That's why the broodmother is getting stronger. We need balance, otherwise her evil power will grow until it cannot be contained. It will sweep across the world under the many legs of her and her spawn. Unless we can find someone who has good as she is bad. Suddenly, while I was reading, I heard a familiar hissing drawing near and turned to see a group of creepers behind me. There he is, boys. That's the diamond monkey who took out Jim. Oh, and that the brood mother wants us to destroy too, I guess. Jim was old school, one of the good ones, man. Jim? That other creeper? Yeah, our twin. Why are so many of you twins? Well, that's a funny story, actually. You see, all creepers, I sh get them, boys. The creepers attacked, but I was feeling confident. After all, I'd only just taken down one of them and gotten stronger as a result. So swinging my sword the way Philo had taught me, I made quick work of dispatching this new group of creepers. From day 20 to day 22, I made the long journey back to the Amaranth Fields. I hadn't returned to base in a few days, so I thought it was about time for a rest and a resupply. Once I was back at my base, I headed back to the mines, gathering up some more iron ore from a vein deep underground. That ore I then turned into iron ingots, which I used then to create a brand new iron chest plate. With all these new hearts, new powerful attacks, and now some added protection against damage, I was feeling ready to go back and face the creeper spiderling from earlier. I crept through the cherry blossom forest, making sure to keep to the treetops and using my diamond monkey agility to my advantage. I came across the spiderling, and when I was ready, leapt down from the treetops to attack. My ambush worked, catching the creeper spiderling off guard. Startled, it panicked, and I was able to use my knockback attack to blast it off its feet. Then, using my iron sword, I finished it off. I had beaten the spiderling. But all the commotion had attracted some unwanted attention from someone I didn't realize was nearby, the broodmother. Heh, <laughs> you think that's all it'll take to stop me? Destroy my spiderlings, I don't even care. Even if you're able to kill just one, there will be two more ready to take its place. Look, you're only this powerful because there was no one good enough to cancel out your bad. 
but I'm around now, and a diamond monkey is the embodiment of goodness. So why don't we call this a stalemate? You and your creepy kids can call off this world domination plan. Just leave everyone alone, and we'll leave you alone. Oh, but I'm not interested in their being balanced. I don't need there to be good. Once my children and I have covered the world, then all that exists, all that is good or bad will be for me to decide. And you won't be around to stop me! The brood mother launched one of her explosive fireballs at me. I thought about fighting back, but instead I snuck off once she'd lost sight of me. I wasn't strong enough yet, and I could hear the Geomancer's lesson in my head. Gotta remember, it's a rocky road. Could really go for some ice cream right about now. From day 23 to day 26, I made my way back to my base. Even though it had taken me a while to get back to it, I had taken down the spiderling that the Geomancer had asked me to help defeat. I thought he'd want to hear the good news. That's my boy! I'm proud of you, lad! Since my chestplate had come in handy protecting me against the spiderling, I decided I needed to complete my set of armor. So I headed back to the mines, gathering up some iron ore from the vein. Once it had been made into ingots and those had been smelted, I had a snazzy pair of iron boots, pants, and a helmet to match my chest plate. I even had enough iron left over to make the rest of the iron tools. Ah, Zozo, I see you've learned the value of a good defense. You could say, I had the same idea. Ta-da! The Geomancer had been back at it again, making upgrades to my base. This time, he'd constructed a roof on the house and a perimeter wall around the main base to protect the structure against attacks, just like a suit of armor. Great minds really did think alike. From day 27 to day 31, I decided I would head back through the canyons. After discovering the book I had found there, I was wondering if there was any more useful information waiting to be uncovered nearby. I didn't come across any more dropped journals, but I did meet a friendly leopard. My name is Lorne. Delightful to meet the one who cleared out some of those pesky creepers. But be on your guard, my friend. There are more out here, and far worse monstrous creatures have aligned themselves with the wretched broodmother. Thanks for the warning, Lorne. If it's not safe out here, then you should head back to my base. Many thanks to you. I never thought I'd be lucky enough to witness a diamond monkey's selflessness again. Searching around, I didn't find much else of interest, so I headed back to base not long after. Once there, I harvested some sheep's wool from the farm and used it to make some decorative banners that really livened the place up. But my excitement was short-lived as Philo ran up to me in a blind panic. Zozo, come quickly, our friend is in need of your help. From day 32 to day 35, I rushed after Philo back towards the campfire area. The wind serpent was under attack. There was no time to lose. He had set me on my path, and now I needed to help him. When we arrived, there were creepers coming from all directions. I had never seen so many in one place before. The hissing and rustling they all made was deafening. I climbed a tree, trying to get closer to the wind serpent in order to save him. I could see him fighting back against the creepers, but while his back was turned, one behind him started smoking. Look out! Boom! The creeper set off an explosive chain reaction, causing a bunch of others around it to also explode. By the time the smoke had cleared, only a few were left, but the wind serpent had been caught in the blast. No! I leaped down from the tree and attacked the remaining creepers. I finished off what was left of them, but it was far too late to save my friend. From day 36 to day 39, I tried to take my mind off of what had happened. I decided I'd go somewhere quiet to be alone with my thoughts and ended up wandering into the Aspen Forest. While I was there, thinking about the poor wind serpent, someone came up to me. It was a green manticore. Excuse me, I couldn't help notice the glimmer of a diamond monkey. Aren't you meant to be the embodiment of goodness? Yeah, I suppose, although I'm not feeling too good right now. Well, uh, sorry to bother you, but I just wanted to ask uh, for your help. The manticore showed me to the source of his troubles, a horrifying undead scorpion. I pulled out my sword and rushed into battle. The undead scorpion was vicious, swiping at me with its tails as I tried my best to defend. With a blast of my knockback attack, followed up with a combo of an ice blast, I was able to defeat the monstrous creature. Oh, thank you so much. That thing was so menacing. The green manticore explained that some creatures believed the power of the broodmother's bat was still getting stronger, so much that it was raising creepy creatures from beyond the grave. I had to stop this!
From day 40 to day 43, I headed back to base to recollect myself and see if my friends had any more advice on how I could get strong enough to stop the Broodmother. Much to my surprise, they had been working on improving the place while I had been gone. Philo had even made some nice new bookshelves and couches and came to me with a special request. Zozo, with all this extra space, I think my friends from the Phantom Fox Clan would feel very at home here. What do you think? Philo, if they're anything like you, then we'd be lucky to have them here. With that, Philo let out a loud screeching call into the air to draw in his fellow phantom foxes. Before long, even more of them had started slinking out from the amaranth fields, and I welcomed them to their new home. Then, a familiar feline face showed up. It was Lorne the Leopard. Glad you made it. Greetings, friend. Forgive me, but I am in need of your help. On my way, I was attacked by a nether ogre, a ghastly thing that has allied itself with the broodmother. Her badness has attracted all manner of otherworldly beasts. Say no more, Lorne. You rest up here and heal. I'll take care of that nether ogre. From day 44 to day 49, I started to search for the nether ogre that had harmed my poor leopard friend Lorne. I decided the best place to start looking would be the canyons, since that's where I had last seen Lorne. If there was no sign, then I'd just retrace her steps heading back towards the base. I thought maybe I'd have some luck finding the nether ogre when I felt the ground start to shake. But where I was expecting to see the ogre emerge from, instead, I saw a monster I didn't want to find. It was the Broodmother! There you are! I've been looking all over for you! Get back! How did you even find me? Oh dear! The oh-so-goody-goody -goody diamond monkey doesn't know! Wait! You managed to find me in the aspen forest too! How do you always know where I am? You should really pay more attention! My spiderlings are everywhere! They're very good at hiding, and they tell me everything they see! You're spying on me? Why? Well, I can't have you finding my nest, can I? And you're completely oblivious to where it is. Let's keep it that way. Something snuck up from behind me. The legendary Silver Skeleton. The Broodmother tricked me into an ambush. The mighty Silver Skeleton took up its weapon and came at me. And I had no choice but to fight back. From day 50 to day 53, I crossed swords with the Silver Skeleton. I tried my best to spot where the Broodmother had got to, but she had scuttled back to the shadows, leaving her undead minion to finish me off. I did my best to parry each of his moves and tried to take a swing at him when I could. But then, I had a thought. If the Broodmother's spiderlings were really watching me, then why not make sure she knew exactly what I could do? I froze him to the spot, so he was stuck fast and couldn't move. One more strike with my blade, and he was defeated. I had done it, but frozen pieces weren't the only things that fell to the floor. Among the icy remains of the silver skeleton were some mystical diamonds. I reached out to grab them and instantly had a flashback. I could see another diamond monkey like me. He wandered the same places, met the same friendly creatures, but there was one difference. Back then, there was balance. I wondered what happened to him, where he had gone, and how it had caused good and bad to become uneven. Took those mystical diamonds with me. I had a great use for them in mind later on. From day 54 to day 57, now that the distraction of the silver skeleton was dealt with, I continued my search for the nether ogre. When I ventured further into the canyons than I'd gotten before, it didn't take me long to track him down. There was no time for chit-chat with this monster. He came right at me, ready to attack. I guess the mobs that the broodmother was teaming up with weren't all the brightest bunch, but they were some of the baddest. The ogre was big and strong. Its heavy fists were like huge boulders. I had to remember to use my smaller size and stature to my advantage, keeping out of the way. But without any tall trees nearby, I couldn't leap up to safety. Eventually, though, the nether ogre's angry swings and the frustration at not being able to catch me soon got the better of him. He started to get tired, slowing down, and once he was almost worn out, BAM! My kickback punch knocked him right off the mountain! With the nether ogre defeated, I headed back to my base in the amaranth fields to tell Lorne the good news. Why, thank you, friend. I'll sleep a little easier knowing that brood is gone. Say, Lorne, did you ever meet another diamond monkey before me? Of course. He was as kind and selfless as you, Zozo, but also wise and noble. Nobody knows where he went. Perhaps his time was up. But once he was gone, much of his goodness left with him, apart from that which he passed on to others. That's what's allowed the broodmother to gain such power. There was an absence of good in the world, so she filled it with bad. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to do some work on the base. After all, with the whole Phantom Fox clan here, the place needed some improvements. 
I expanded the pen that was holding the sheep, making more room so that more of them could fit in. More sheep meant more wool. Then, I had to get working on my idea to use the mystical diamonds I'd picked up from the silver skeleton. Problem was, I didn't have enough to actually make anything. Maybe I could find some normal diamonds to make up for it. Sure enough, I headed down into the mines and found just what I was looking for. Diamonds, and plenty of them. I started chipping them out of the stone wall, and before long, I had enough for my plan. I used the diamonds, both the normal kind and the mystical ones, to craft myself a brand new diamond sword and a pickaxe to match. Now I could dish out a lot more damage. Zozo, come take some time to relax. Sit with us a while and see the good you're putting back into the world. Philo invited me to come and hang out with him and the rest of his Phantom Fox friends. They'd really made the base into a more homely place, with a roaring fireplace and a nice living area where we all sat and chilled for a while. Philo also mentioned that they built a small cottage home for themselves and connected all the buildings with a nice path. The base was really coming together. From day 63 to day 66, I was finishing up a few minor improvements on my base when the Geomancer came to me with a new lead on what our next move should be. I've been feeling a rumbling, lad. Tremors in the ground. The stones, they speak to me, rocking my very soul. Okay, and what's the sound of the underground saying? It might be telling me where the Brood Mother's lair is. There's a lot of movement in the Cypress Swamplands. It is a vile, putrid place. No wonder the Brood Mother feels so at home there. I'll check it out. I headed off to the location the Geomancer pointed out. He was right about one thing, the place was gross. I had a weird feeling while I was there, almost as if I was being watched, and not just by the Broodmother's spiderlings. Suddenly, I got startled by a warped phantom. I got ready for a fight, thinking that this was another undead being that the Broodmother had raised. But to my surprise, he was actually friendly. Oh, thank the heavens, a diamond monkey. Goodness will be restored, and then I can rest again. That foul creeper spider brood mother dragged me out from my eternal slumber, but I was at peace. I'll do what I can. Hey, maybe there's some way to get you back to wherever you were before. If you could, that'd be wonderful. From day 67 to day 70, I traveled across the cypress swamplands with the warped phantom, and we soon came across the source of the trouble. One of the Broodmother's minions, a wither spider, had disrupted the phantom's tomb, and it was stopping his spirit from resting. So I leapt into action to give the ghost a hand. I wasn't anticipating such a tough fight, but even with my new mystical diamond sword, the wither spider was standing strong. I made a split-second decision to hit it with an ice blast attack, then strike it again with my mystical diamond sword, finally getting rid of it for good. Oh, thank you very much. Back to peace I go. From day 71 to day 74, I continued searching around the cypress swamplands, as creepy and stinky as it was. I was told that the creeper spider broodmother was lurking around here, so I can't give up until I've gathered some valuable intel. I climbed up to the tree canopy and walked until I saw something. Oh, a diamond gorilla. That reminds me, you should search ZO ZO on YouTube to find tons of awesome Minecraft 100 Days Adventures. But things were about to get even more interesting because the creeper spider broodmother herself crawled out of the darkness towards me. Welcome, Zozo, you silly little monkey. If I knew you were coming, I would have made tea. Instead, I'm going to make a fool of you. Look, I don't necessarily think we need to fight. It's all about finding the balance between good and evil. We can find that without needing to fight each other. You want balance? I want domination. And I know exactly how to get it. I've created so many creepers and so many creeper spiderlings. And in the end, if I have enough, them all blowing up at once would destroy the entire overworld. So everyone needs to do what I say, or that's exactly what will happen. That's diabolical. It's effective. You can learn a thing or two from me. Now run, little monkey, run. The creeper spider brood mother fired another exploding fireball, and I ran for my life. From day 75 to day 78, I was sitting around my base, confused and afraid. Just couldn't stop thinking about what the creeper spider brood mother had said to me. Would she really blow up the entire overworld to get what she wants? That's a level of evil I've never even seen before, and I'm not sure any good would ever balance that out. But I was able to calm down with the help of a distraction, a visit from Lorne the Leopard. Zozo, take a look outside. I made a cool watchtower on the base, so we can keep an eye out for any approaching creepers. We'll be extra safe now. 
I took a look outside and saw that Lauren had done an amazing job on the watch shower. Seeing it made me forget about my doubts for a bit. And then, something even cooler happened when Philo the Phantom Fox approached me. Zozo, I've been discussing with the rest of the Phantom Fox clan, and we've decided to give you one of our most treasured family antiques to use in your fight against the creeper threat, the magical enchanted guitar. Wow, this is amazing. He passed me the guitar, and the second I equipped it and started to play a sick tune, I found my power growing. I reached 100 hearts, became bigger, stronger, and now had a new special ability, firing a powerful green laser. I'd hate to be the creeper spider brood mother now. From day 79 to day 84, I went back out to the cypress swamplands again with my newfound power and confidence, ready to take on the creeper spider brood mother for round two. Couldn't see her anywhere. Instead, I was attacked by a nasty gang of whisperers, which I was able to pretty easily cut down with my awesome guitar. I can see why the Phantom Fox clan cared about this so much. I heard rustling in the bushes and turned to see a rabbit wolf hopping towards me. Hey, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. But for what? Those whisperers have been a pain in my butt forever. And you finally took care of them. Here, had that spare diamond helmet. It didn't fit me anyway. Oh, wow, thank you. I'm better guarded now than ever before. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, eager to show my friends my new shiny diamond helmet when I saw a little gang of creepers crawling into my base, closing in on an innocent big axolotl. Oh no, I need to run them off. I fired ice blasts and swung my sword until the creepers were gone. Thankfully, none of them exploded near any of the structures on my base, but that didn't mean I could let them get away. But during the fight, I also saw that a creeper was running towards the innocent big axolotl. I couldn't let that happen. I ran over and destroyed the creeper immediately, even while the others ran away. But the big axolotl was extremely grateful for the help. Thank you, Zozo. I owe you my life. Stay safe out there, big axolotl. From day 90 to day 94, I traced back the way from where the creepers came, and it led me to the Cypress Swamplands. I reached an area that looked like some kind of nest, where I can only imagine the creeper spider broodmother was waiting inside. But what was even more worrying was the thing waiting on the bridge to the base. A massive, heavily armed vindicator. You're not a creeper or undead. What are you doing here? I'm working for the big mama, and she wants me to show you that diamonds aren't forever. But why would you want to work for her? She and her creepers want to rule the world. Yeah, and I think they're gonna, so I want to fight for the winning team. So that's enough talking. Let's destroy each other. And with that, the battle began. From day 95 to day 97, I fought the Vindicator who worked for the Creeper Spider Broodmother. He was one of the most skilled opponents I'd ever faced, and he was dealing a lot of damage against me. But I managed to fight back. Little by little, I turned the tide until the Vindicator was on the ropes, and eventually, he gave up. Please, I yield. Have mercy. I'll let you go. But first, tell me something I don't know about your boss. Tell me something that'll help me win this battle for good. Okay, okay. Well, you don't need to worry about taking out the little creepers. Just focus on taking out the brood mother. She's got, like, a hive mind. You take out her, all the creepers go with her. And with that, the Vindicator ran off, never to be seen again. So I just need to defeat the brood mother to defeat the whole army? Now I know for sure what I need to do. On day 98, as I prepared to return to the Cypress Swamplands to take on and defeat the Creeper Spider Broodmother once and for all, I decided to speak to each one of my basemates one on one. First, I spoke to Lorne the Leopard. I believe in you, Zozo. You're living up to the legacy of the Diamond Monkey. Once you're done, the forces of good and evil will be balanced once more. Next, I went and spoke to Philo the Phantom Fox. The safety of our clan owes much to you, Zozo. It's been an honor to work with you. I look forward to celebrating with you once you've defeated the evil. And finally, I spoke to the Geomancer. You're gonna squish that nasty spider like a big old newspaper, Zozo. Rock on, man, rock on. You're stone cold. And with all those words of encouragement, I was ready to go. On day 99, I made my way back to the freaky, stinky Cypress Swamplands. I'd conserved all my energy, ready to unleash it in one big, awesome final battle with the Creeper Spider Broodmother. I know the truth now. If I can defeat her, then I'll defeat her entire Creeper army. But there was one problem in the way. The Creeper army I was just talking about, all surrounding and guarding the Creeper nest. 
There was no way I could fight them all alone, and if I did, it might leave me weak and tired to take on the mean green mother herself. That's when, in my moment of need, the warped phantom whose spirit I'd helped lay to rest came running towards me. He was here to repay my good deed. Zozo, go forth and destroy the evil that has plagued this land for so long. I'll distract your awful spawn. You get in there and save the world. I will, warped phantom. Thank you. As the creepers swarmed the phantom, I snuck up the stairs and into the well that the broodmother repurposed into its own nest. On day 100, I crawled down into the depths of the nest where I could take on the creeper spider broodmother alone. She was waiting for me, and she wasn't happy to see me. You! You're not meant to be here, diamond monkey! This is my domain! Soon, nowhere is going to be your domain. I wanted to coexist with you. I wanted there to be balance. But you left me no choice. All we can do is fight. Then why even waste time talking? Allow me to destroy you so me and my creepers can finally claim the world that is rightfully ours! And so, the battle began! With my sick guitar, I began fighting the creeper spider Broodmother as she shot her exploding fireballs at me. The battle was hard. She was the toughest enemy I'd ever faced. But I still had one more power to use against her. I knocked her towards the exit, and that scared her off. She prepared a surprise attack as I exited the room, but I was undeterred. She started to escape, but I summoned all my energy into one attack. My ultimate green laser! With that one last attack, the creeper spider broodmother died, taking all of her creeper army with her, and the forces of good and evil were balanced across the land once more. On day one, I spawned into the red desert as Diamond Venom, the symbiote with major swag. Whoa, and I've started with 20 hearts? That must be because of my diamond heart skin. Even though I'm a baby Venom, I'm one tough baby. But I didn't get to enjoy all this for long. Before I knew it, a bunch of heavily armored royal guards were running towards me. Yeah, he looks like one of the escapees. We need to get him back into containment before Agent Horace finds out he's here. Escapees? But I didn't escape. I'm Zozo, and I just spawned here. Oh, we've heard that one before, bub. Come with us, you sparkly symbiote. Or we'll be forced to use extreme, uh, force. I really didn't want to get into a fight straight away, especially over a misunderstanding. So I ran as fast as my little diamond venom legs would carry me. Uh-oh, it looks like I might not be fast enough. As I was running, I suddenly noticed that more royal guards had me backed up into a corner. Symbiotes are powerful, but as just a baby and without any weapons, there was no way I could take all these guys on. Can't we just talk this out? I promise I won't misbehave. I think this is a huge misunderstanding. Don't worry, kid. We'll talk it out when we have you back in containment. Come along now. We don't want to hurt you if we don't have to. And with that, the gang of royal guards led me off to who knows where. This isn't turning out to be a very successful first day. On day two, the royal guards escorted me into what looked like a kind of small secret research lab in the middle of the desert. Welcome to Area 52, son. This is where we keep all the secret things for research and testing, and that includes you. But I don't even know what you guys think I did. That's for us to know, and you to probably never find out. Now get in this cell over here. We'll check your paperwork and deal with you later. They made me go into a cell where a huge, kind of intimidating redstone golem was waiting for me. Oh, shiny. What are you in for, Mac? Honestly, I don't even know. I feel like the right to a fair trial should have been given to us. They can't just lock us away like this. You're here to that, buddy. I'm Robbie. Robbie the Redstone Golem. You? I'm Zozo. And don't worry, Robbie. I'm going to bust both of us out of here. But how? You see, one of the powers of the symbiote is super strength. Watch. With my powerful diamond fists, I busted down the wall of the cell leading to the outside. And before any of the royal guards could even notice, Robbie and I escaped out into the desert. That was amazing, Zozo. We should probably go our separate ways now, so that those goons can't catch us, but I hope we run into each other again. Same here, Robbie. Happy travels! And with that, we both ran off in different directions. On day three, I ran further into the desert, trying to put as much distance between myself and Area 52 as possible. I never want to have to go back there, if I can avoid it. 
But as I was running away, my diamond venom stomach started to rumble. Oh no, this isn't good. Symbiotes are meat eaters, so I need to get my hands on some good protein as soon as possible. Lucky for me, there were some desert chickens waiting around, and they just looked too delicious for me to resist. I attacked them until I was left with some yummy raw chicken on my hands, which I ate with gusto. That's finger looking good. My hunger sated, I kept on walking until I ran into another lone figure in the desert. It was a warden. Hello there, Zozo. Wait, how do you know my name? I know a lot of things. Hooks of the job. I'm Agent Warden. Nice to meet you. Agent? Oh no, you're with Area 52. You're gonna try to capture me. I used to be with them, but now I've gone rogue. Believe me, Zozo, we're on the same team. Come with me, I'll tell you everything you wanna know. That was an offer too good to refuse, so I followed Agent Warden through the desert. From day four to day five, we arrived in an isolated base in the middle of the Black Forest, so deep and dark that nobody would ever find it unless they knew what they were looking for. Welcome to my secret base, Zozo. And I do mean secret. If you tell anyone about this, I'll be forced to destroy you. Noted. Jeez, this guy is intense. I heard that. No, you didn't. When we were inside, Agent Warden started telling me the whole horrible truth about what people were up to at Area 52. You were lucky to escape with your life, Zozo. They're monstrous people. They capture and experiment on everyone who's different, trying to take their special powers and use them for their own gain. I used to be part of their whole organization until I decided enough was enough. I needed to take them down, and over the next 100 days, you can help me take them down. After what they did to me and Robbie, I'm happy to lend a hand in taking these bad guys down. That's the spirit. But we can't be seen together, Zozo. If we are, there's too much of a risk we'll both get taken out. Take this stone sword, axe, and stone pickaxe. Go make your own secret base. We'll talk again soon. My instructions were clear. I took the sword, axe, and pickaxe and left, going deep into the black forest. I cut down some trees to make a clearing and mined some stone. Then I started building myself a basic base to spend the night, adding a nice furnished room and a bed to make myself feel safe from the mobs at night. I stood back to appreciate my small and proud base, and I was really pleased with my work. But then, I heard some royal guards coming towards the forest. There's that diamond venom! Get him! Stay away from my base, guys, or you're gonna find out that I'm really a lethal protector. They didn't listen. Instead, they charged in, and I used my super strength to beat the living stuffing out of them. That's what you get for messing with the diamond symbiote. And giving those royal guards a beatdown also gave me enough XP to level up, becoming bigger, stronger, and amazingly, having 50 hearts. And it looks like I can use my super strong symbiote arms to climb walls. I climbed the walls of my little base and sat on the roof, admiring the beautiful scenery of the Black Forest. From day six to day eight, I continued working on my base, adding some couches and bookshelves to my living area. When I took a break, none other than Robbie the Redstone Golem came walking through the forest right next to my base. I was happy to see him again. Robbie, I'm so happy to see you again. How are things going with you? Sadly, not good, man. I've been looking for a place to crash, but two of the villages I've tried to visit were already destroyed by the time I turned up. Destroyed? That's terrible. You said it, man. Something awful is going on out here. You need to stay safe. I'm gonna keep moving, and you should keep your eyes peeled. Stay safe out there, Robbie. Robbie left, and I was feeling more confused and afraid than ever. I needed to go and speak to Agent Warden as soon as possible. I ran to a secret base and told him everything that Robbie had told me. Then it seems the situation is already graver than I first thought. I have a few classified missions I need to perform myself, but in the meantime, head to the Sierra Valley and scope it out for any unusual activity. Together, we can stop the worst of this insidious plan before it even starts. Yes, sir. I'll do whatever I need to. That's a great attitude, Zozo. Do everything I say, and you'll go far. From day 9 to day 10, I did exactly what Agent Warden said and made my way out to the Sierra Valley to investigate. I just needed to find out if anything unusual was happening out here. Doesn't look like anything weird is happening out here. Oh, other than that. As it turned out, I hadn't noticed the huge armored piglin running towards me. Yeah, that's certainly pretty unusual. I began to battle the zombified armored piglin, but he was way tougher than the royal guards. Even with all my hearts and my diamond heart skin, he still had me on the ropes. 
until suddenly an armored pillager ran in and shot the zombified armored piglin with a bow and arrow. The second the arrow hit the creature, it seemingly got a lot weaker, and one more strike from my stone sword was enough to defeat it. That was awesome! You really saved my life there! Thank you, armored pillager! Don't mention it! I've never seen anyone like you! You really can fight! I've got a gang of cell swords who operate out here in the valley. We could use someone like you if you wanted to sign up. It'd be good work and good pay. It definitely sounds tempting, but I can't right now. I'm sorry. I'm on an incredibly important mission from Agent Warden. Who? It doesn't surprise me that you haven't heard of him. He's incredibly secretive. But I'll let him know we had this talk. Thank you again for the help. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Agent Warden's secret base and told him all about what happened in the Sierra Valley with the piglin and the armored pillager who saved my life. But by the end of the story, Agent Warden didn't seem happy with me. You even told him my name? You can't do that, Zozo. I thought I told you my mission was top secret. Can you not even follow the most basic of instructions? I'm so sorry, Agent Warden. I didn't know it would upset you so much. I promise I won't tell anyone else your name. I'll keep your missions top secret. Good. That's more like it. For your next mission, I need you to go to the Sierra Valley again, the North specifically, and find your way to a research base hidden out there. They're puppets of Area 52, carrying out their evil bidding. If you value your freedom, you'll gather all the information about them you can. Yes, Agent Warden. I won't let you down this time. But that mission sounded dangerous, so before I could take it on, I needed to upgrade my gear. That's why I ventured down into an abandoned mine in the Black Forest to collect some iron. I mined until I had enough iron ore, which I then smelted into ingots in an abandoned furnace and crafted into a full set of iron armor, an iron sword, iron axe, and iron pickaxe. But it wasn't all easy. I was detected and attacked by a bunch of spiders while I was down there. This is what I get for shining bright like a diamond. It didn't take me long to defeat the spiders with my iron sword. Then it was time to prove myself to Agent Warden once again. From day 13 to day 15, I ventured out through the Sierra Valley until I found what looked like a small research base. It was crawling with scientists. Guess it's time to play detective and ask some tough questions. I snuck in and found one of the researchers alone. I cornered him and used my intimidating diamond venom look to get his undivided attention. Listen here, you're gonna tell me everything you know about your bosses at Area 52, or else! What? Uh, Area 52 aren't our bosses? Liar! I have it on good authority that you do all their evil bidding, so you better start telling the truth. I am telling the truth. The only time we ever collaborated was on the Warden Project. Wait, the what project? I've told you too much already. Just please, please leave me alone. Yes, I will. I'm so sorry for bothering you. I left the research base and started heading across the Sierra Valley. Something about all of this was terribly wrong, and I needed to get some answers from Agent Warden immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I made my way through the Black Forest back to Agent Warden's secret base as quickly as possible. But on the way, I ran into Robbie the Redstone Golem again. Robbie, what's wrong this time? Zozo, I found out some terrifying news, and I needed to tell you as soon as possible. The one who's been destroying whole villages is some kind of genetically enhanced warden, and he lives in this forest. Genetically enhanced warden? Oh no, oh no, no, no! I've had this all wrong! I need to get back to that research base and warn them! But by the time I'd crossed the Sierra Valley and reached the research base, it was already too late. The research base was in ruins, and who else was standing in the rubble but Agent Warden? I decided to rush in and confront him. Agent Warden, how could you? Why are you doing this? These people aren't under the orders of Area 52 at all. Oh, Zozo, as naive and small-minded as ever. You really are a diamond venom in the rough, aren't you? I don't know the full extent of your evil plan, but one thing I do know is that I'm not going to be a part of it, whatever awful thing you want to do. Be careful, Zozo. If you're not with me, you're against me. Then I guess I'm against you. You're about to find out just how strong a diamond venom really is. But Zozo, all symbiotes like you have two weaknesses, fire and sound. Agent Warden unleashed a hugely powerful sonic boom out of his chest. It was a direct hit on me, and as soon as it connected, I fell unconscious. 
From day 20 to day 22, I woke up in the ruins of the Sierra Valley research base. Agent Warden was gone, and it looked like there was only one surviving scientist, the same one I'd interrogated earlier. You there. Zozo, was it? I'm Dr. Hardy. I, I saw that you tried to defend us against that terrible monster. And even though the destruction he caused was awful, it means a lot to know you're on our side. I'm still so sorry I couldn't help more, Dr. Hardy. I have no idea why Agent Warden just turned like that. But I have a feeling that if we work together, we can find out why. Want to come stay at my base and team up? That sounds like an excellent idea, Zozo. I want to get back against this monster any way I can. Dr. Hardy and I returned to my base, and I began working on a new room for him. It had an area for him to sleep, and an area for him to conduct any scientific experiments he needed to. Thank you, Zozo. This will do nicely. From day 23 to day 26, I made a trek back to the Red Desert, where I originally spawned, to see if I missed anything. If I was wrong about Agent Warden, I've got to make sure I pay more attention to things from now on. I carefully looked around and noticed there was an Isolager in trouble. Someone, please! I need a protector! An armored skeleton was running them down, and it seemed like it would catch them soon. I had to do something! Don't worry, Diamond Venom is here! I jumped into the path of the armored skeleton and hit him with my iron sword. It got his attention, but he wasn't looking that damaged from the attack. I had succeeded at making the armored skeleton attack me instead of the Isolager, but now it seemed I would have to deal with a strong and fast mob all on my own. It wasn't an easy fight, but in the end, I took home the W. The Isolager was delighted. That was amazing. We make a good team. You said it, Isolager. It's almost like a symbiotic relationship. Like a symbiote. Defeating the armored skeleton to save that Isolager had reminded me of my true strength and caused my powers to evolve. I now had 75 hearts and could dash to quickly close the gap with enemies. From day 27 to day 31, I was still in the red desert when I came across a herd of sheep. They were looking for grass to eat, but couldn't find any. I guess they must have been lost. This way, sheep, there's plenty of grass to graze on in the black forest. Back at the base, I made sure to build a pen for the sheep around some of that delicious grass I mentioned. Delicious for sheep, at least. This diamond venom is on an all-meat diet. Later on, I was walking through the base when I ran into the Isolager I had protected in the desert. Hey, Zozo, thanks again for your help the other day. Hey, Isolager, when did you get here? Oh, I've been here for a while. I noticed you have some scientists doing research here, so I thought I could help out in a big way. Follow me. I followed the Isolager to another part of the base and saw what he was talking about. He had upgraded the base with a research watchtower. The scientists are gonna love this. Meanwhile, somewhere in a secret place, Agent Warden was plotting the next phase of the Warden Project. And whatever that entailed was probably super evil. Everything is going according to my super secret plan. That's because you're so good at being evil, Warden. I agree, Pigless. Soon it will be time for you to play your role in how things proceed. It is an honor to serve you, sir. Piglets will make sure your every order is carried out without fail. From day 32 to day 35, I went to Area 52 to see if I could get any more answers out of the Royal Guards. Even if they didn't know anything else about what Agent Warden was up to, I could still reason with them and form an alliance. Ah, it's Diamond Venom! There's no reasoning with them! Battle formation! The Royal Guards fought against me, but I defended myself by using my armor to reduce the damage from their attacks. Hold it, guys. I really think we can work this out. Eh, he's trying to reason with us. I guess we were wrong about him. That's the first time we've been wrong about anything. The Royal Guards took me to the office of their top agent, Agent Horus. So, you must be that diamond venom that escaped from our holding cell a while back. It's a shame I never got to meet you in person. Is that because you were going to do some uncalled for experiments on me? What? No. What do you think we do around here? We thought that a diamond symbiote like you had the potential to be turned towards the side of good. That's why we brought you here. I'm glad you guys weren't up to anything sinister. You definitely could have been nicer about it, though. The kinds of super-powered monsters we deal with, it's hard not to go overboard. Especially after the Warden Project made us responsible for another monster. You mean Agent Warden? What is he up to? I can tell you it's something most secretive and most definitely sinister. We've been keeping tabs on him, but he's operating in the shadows now. I want to help you take him down. He betrayed me, and I don't like that kind of thing. Good. 
We could use a venom like you on our side. Until Agent Warden is defeated, we'll make you a temporary secret agent. Agent Diamond Venom. I like the sound of that. From day 36 to day 39, I went mining for iron to fix up my armor. If I'm going to be playing the part of a secret agent, I should look like I've got the best gear. I dug down deep into the mining area and managed to strike iron. There was plenty of iron to go around, enough to fix my entire set of iron armor. Yes. There were some diamonds down there as well. I must have had a knack for finding them because I was a diamond venom myself. Diamonds are a diamond's best friend. Wait, what did I say? The diamonds weren't even the rarest treasure that I found in the mine. The honor went to the powerful battle axe that I found lodged in a wall. I went above ground with the spoils of my mining excursion and fixed up my armor. I finished just in time for the Isolager to come in and talk to me. Hey, Zozo. Actually, it's Agent Zozo. Right. Anyway, I was thinking we should expand our team. There's someone I want you to go talk to. They should be waiting for you at the Shattered Glacier. From day 40 to day 43, I went to the Shattered Glacier where the Isolager said I could meet our new contact. I was surprised and relieved to see that it was my old friend Robbie the Redstone Golem. I heard Area 52 made you a temporary agent. They are no friends of mine, but it's good to see that you're moving up in the world. Whatever it takes to stop that rampaging Agent Warden, what did you call me here to talk about? I wanted to ask if I could join your supergroup. Even if we're only working together in secret, this world needs protectors. I was about to ask him what he had in mind when a giant pig man ran towards us and stopped right next to us. It was Pigless, the new minion that was sent by Agent Warden. You were too easy to follow, Diamond Venom. Time to carry out Agent Warden's orders. And what would those be? There's no point in asking me that question. I'm not telling you. Pigless smashed a big hole in the ground to show off how strong he was. He's tough, Robbie. Do you think we could take him if we teamed up? Maybe, but for now, we should get somewhere safe to have the rest of our conversation. I nodded, and the two of us ran away as Pigless continued to smash his way across the shattered glacier. From day 44 to day 49, I was lying low in my base when I was visited by Agent Horace. He really must have been the top agent because I didn't even see him come in. Agent Zozo, I've got some key intel and a new assignment for you. Took you long enough. This diamond venom is on the job, whatever it is. There is an object known as the Destroyer, which was once in our possession at Area 52. We believe that in the right hands, it has the power to take down any bad guy. Even Agent Warden? Now, now, Diamond Venom. Just focus on finding the Destroyer and getting it to us. We'll handle the rest. Where can I find the Destroyer? It was last sighted in the Sierra Valley biome. You should head back there and search for it. Won't let you down, Agent Horace. From day 50 to day 53, on Horace's orders, I went to the Sierra Valley biome to learn more about the Destroyer. It looked like I wasn't the only agent on the case. A royal guard was already here, probably sent by Horace too. Hey there, agent. I'm Agent Zozo. I'm looking for the Destroyer too. Shh, keep your voice down. We don't know who's listening. I'll tell you what I know about the Destroyer, but you need a promise to keep it a secret. I promise. The truth about the Destroyer is that we made it in Area 52 using some rare materials from another dimension. Those materials are what gave the item its unmatched destructive power. What were the materials? And what dimension did they come from? That's classified. The point is, we were so impressed by these materials that we started to use them on a different project. The Warden Project. Let me guess, that was how Agent Warden got his superpowers. It was what made him a supervillain. The materials gave him destructive sonic abilities that were out of control. That's why we need a weapon like the Destroyer to take him out. I understand now. You keep looking around here. I'm gonna go back to the base for now. I left the Royal Guard to keep searching. That's when I saw a battle between an Iron Chicken and a Skeleton. The Iron Chicken looked like she would make a good addition to the super group I was forming with the others. I went to help her in the fight, but the Iron Chicken had already won by the time I even got a hit in. Whoa, you're strong. Do you want to join my superhero team? Sorry, Diamond Venom, but Iron Chicken works alone. She ran off right after saying that. I guess not everyone wants to team up with me. From day 54 to day 57, I was traveling through the Red Desert when I ran into none other than Pigless, Agent Warden's big brute of a henchman. What do you want, Pigless? I only want what Agent Warden orders me to want. That's how loyal of a henchman I am. 
Okay, and what does Agent Warden want? He ordered me to take out the trash. And the trash is you. Pigless hit me hard, sending me flying across the desert. His super strength was so much stronger than mine, and I was practically super duper strength. I fought back, but I was losing a lot of hearts to the big pig's punches. You really are trash. Just call me the trash compactor. Actually, I prefer to be recycled. And by that, I mean live to fight another day. I knew I couldn't win, so I ran away from Pigless. He might have been strong, but sure was slow. While his henchman was keeping me busy, Agent Warden was in his secret base, developing a personal teleporter that would take him between dimensions at will. Once I harness the true destructive contained in the other dimensions, I will be unstoppable. From day 58 to day 62, I met with the scientist who's been living in my base to see what he's been up to. How's the research been going, Dr. Hardy? I've got amazing things to tell you about, Zozo. The statue I've been working on is really coming along. It'll be one of the great achievements when we're done building it. Awesome work! There is one slight issue, though. I've run out of building materials. Do you think you could fetch us more? Of course. I was just heading down to the mine anyway. I returned to where I had been mining before and dug further into the area with the diamonds. I was determined to get even more of them so I could get a complete set of diamond gear to match my diamond body. I also made sure to get more stone and iron while I was there so the scientist could continue work on the statue. Once I had enough of everything, I left the mine and gave the scientists what they had been looking for. Then I went to the crafting table and made myself a diamond sword, diamond boots, and a diamond helmet. Diamond Venom is more diamond than ever! From day 63 to day 66, I received another visit from Agent Horus. He must really want me to find that destroyer. I looked around like you told me to, but I haven't found it anywhere. That's all right, Agent Zozo. The Royal Guards and I have done that part of the job ourselves. We have reason to believe that the destroyer somehow crossed dimensions back to where it originally came from. The destroyer is in another dimension? Yes, in another world known as the end. How can I get there from here? Take a look at this portal we installed in your base. Agent Horus led me to an incomplete end portal, which at the moment wasn't working. I wonder where they even got this portal, but I didn't want to question Agent Horus. What do I have to do in order to reactivate the end portal? No idea. We've never gotten any farther than this, but if it does activate, you should let us know post haste. From day 67 to day 70, I kept an eye on the end portal that Area 52 had installed in my base. There were no signs of activity, and I wondered if I would ever get the chance to get the destroyer. I was relieved of this duty when Robbie, the redstone golem, showed up again. Hey, Robbie, what are you up to? We've got ourselves a new objective, Zozo. There's some trouble down at the shattered glacier, and we should go help out. What's the problem? One dangerous mob called the Skeleton Jackal might be a new supervillain. Leave it to me, Robbie. I arrived at the Shattered Glacier and saw exactly what Robbie was talking about. The Skeleton Jackal had claimed the Shattered Glacier as his own territory. Diamond Venom, you're too late. I, the Skeleton Jackal, will soon be the most powerful new villain out there. Sorry, but I already have an arch nemesis, and he's not you. I'll make you take me seriously. The Skeleton Jackal attacked me with his claws, but I fought back with my trusty battle axe. We were evenly matched in damage, but my diamond armor and diamond skin made my defenses that much stronger. You might be durable, Diamond Venom, but this fight isn't over by a long shot. Stop this! We don't have to fight! What if, instead of a villain, you decided to be an anti-hero? You can still be scary, but you also get to do the right thing. Anti-hero, huh? I guess I could give it a try. Wow, it worked. Welcome to the team, Skeleton Jackal. From day 71 to day 74, my base was under attack by Pigless, who was using his brute force to smash giant holes into the surrounding terrain. Piggy power! Stop it, Pigless! I used my dash ability and started swinging my battle axe at Pigless, inflicting damage on him. Ouch, that axe hurts. Can I have it? Pigless punched me, causing me to drop the battle axe. Uh -oh. He picked it up himself and started swinging it at me. I equipped my diamond sword and continued to fight, but Pigless was even more deadly with the battle axe in his hand. Give that back, it's not yours. It is now, eat this. Pigless wound up a big punch and sent me careening straight into a hill and caused me to get heavily dazed. When I got back up, he was already gone. It was no use trying to get my battle axe back now. It looked like my base was totally wrecked, too. 
pigless! I was really sad, so I went to the river to be alone for a bit. After a while, Isolager came by to cheer me up. Hey, Zozo, I know you're feeling down about losing your weapon, but I've rebuilt the base and added a perimeter wall to keep out future attacks. You're the best, Isolager. I'm glad you're part of my supergroup. Meanwhile, back at Agent Warden's base, my arch nemesis had gained the powers of the interdimensional energies he was attempting to harness. Area 52 thought I was a mistake and tried to destroy me. <laughs> Their real mistake was not going further with their experiments. From day 75 to day 78, Agent Horus came to check on the base and give me a brand new weapon to replace my battle axe, the Javelin. We heard what happened with Pigless. It sounds like you've really gotten on Agent Warden's bad side. That Pigless is a real menace. He's going down just like Agent Warden. You're in luck. We've got the location of Agent Warden's secret base. We figured we'd send you over there to do some real damage. I'll do more than that. This might just be business for Area 52, but it's always personal for me. I took the javelin and set off through the Black Forest toward Agent Warden's secret base. If Pigless was there, I'd be sure to get my revenge from last time. From day 79 to day 84, I was sneaking around the outside of Agent Warden's secret base, and sure enough, I found exactly who I was looking for, Pigless. Agent Zozo, looks like recycling day came early. I'll break you down like a cardboard box. You're the one who's gonna be broken, Pigless. I threw my javelin at Pigless, catching him off guard, and then I used the opportunity to hit him a bunch of times with my diamond sword. Not bad, I didn't expect that new weapon, but did you really forget your old weapon so soon? No, please Pigless, anything but battle axe. Pigless swung the battle axe that he stole from me, taking off a ton of hearts. He was wielding the weapon as if it was meant for him. Once again, my diamond sword couldn't stand up to him, especially since my super strength was weaker than his. I really like being a henchman, you know. When I secretly get rid of someone, Agent Warden rewards me with treasure. I wonder how rich I'll be after I deal with you. Oh no, am I going to lose? As Pigless prepared to deliver the decisive blow with my own battle axe, I heard a voice from the trees. It was the Skeleton Jackal. Zozo, don't forget that your diamond venom, a shining inspiration to anti-heroes everywhere. You're right. Inspired by Skeleton Jackal's words, I grew into a form powerful enough to take on Pigless, even with the battle axe. I had 100 hearts and diamond venom claws that were stronger than any diamond sword. With my new form, he was dropped in no time. Well, I did the best I could, but sometimes a henchman is just a henchman. Your boss agent warden is next, Pigless. And with that, Pigless vanished. From day 85 to day 89, I went back to my base to tell everyone that I had defeated Pigless in battle. I went and visited the scientist first to inquire about the state of the statue. I've made some amazing strides in the pursuit of the statue, but I'm still missing some materials. Could you grab me some more wood? Sure, let me grab some from my chest. I took some wood from my chest and brought it back to Dr. Hardy, who then escorted me to the statue. It was a statue of Dr. Hardy halfway through transforming into normal venom. I guess he must have been a big fan. Afterwards, I returned to the side of the end portal where Agent Horus was waiting for me. It seems that Agent Warden has already gone to the end to harness the materials there. If the Destroyer falls into his hands, he'll be even more unstoppable than a big pigman with a battle axe. That's pretty specific, but I totally understand what you mean. These eyes of Ender that the Royal Guards have gathered should be able to jumpstart the portal. Get in there and make us proud. Yes, sir. He activated the portal and I stepped through. Suddenly, I found myself in the Nightshade Forest. This must be the main volume of the dimension known as the End. This is feeling strangely familiar again. Not too far away, I saw the Destroyer lying on the ground. I didn't have time to go and grab it. An Enderman appeared out of the trees and started to attack me. Ugh, I guess I've got to deal with the mob first. I used my diamond sword combined with my claw attacks to make the Enderman back off and run away. With the mob gone, I picked up the Destroyer and headed back towards the portal. From day 90 to day 94, I heard someone sneaking up behind me. It was Agent Warden. Welcome home, Diamond in the Rough. 
This isn't my home. Home is on the other side of this portal, and I intend on going back. After I defeat you, that is. You won't defeat me, Agent Zozo. You're just like me. The diamond symbiote that grants you all of your powers is from the end. That's why this place is your home. I'm from the end? Yes, and that's why I want you on my side. I need someone to help me reap the rewards that exist in this world. The materials that gave me powers could make an army of sonic warriors. I'm not joining you. Area 52 trusted me to take you down, and that's what I'll do. You're making a mistake. Agent Horus and the others are weak, and that's why they capture and create super beings to fight their battles. I think we should choose our own battles, don't you? I actually agree. That's why I'm choosing my battle, to be me versus you. I threw my javelin, but Agent Warden took it like it was nothing and bombarded me with a sonic blast. Even though I'd gotten stronger, sonic attacks were still my weakness. His powers had increased so much that I was powerless against him. Agent Warden hit me with a few melee attacks before knocking me out and stealing the destroyer. I'll be having that. See you on the other side, diamond in the rough. He ran off through my end portal. From day 95 to day 97, I was able to muster enough strength to crawl my way to the portal. There's no time to lose. I have to warn Agent Horus. And with that, I crawled into the portal. When I got to the secret research lab of Area 52, I found that all of the Royal Guards had been wiped out by Agent Warden in a destruction spree. This was definitely the Destroyer's handiwork. I kept searching around until I stumbled upon Agent Horus. He was the last one alive and was hanging on by a thread. You sure kept us waiting, huh? Agent Horus, I'm sorry. I couldn't stop him. He used my weakness against me. No, Agent Zozo, I'm sorry. It was our foolishness and greed that led to Agent Warden's rise to power. If only we had been more careful and not tried to turn what we didn't understand into weapons. You couldn't have known he'd go this evil. It's all right. Area 52 will be no more after I'm gone. I need you to clean up our last mess, Diamond Venom. Make sure you stop him. Horace died, trying to harness the forces beyond his control. Now Agent Warden was trying to do the same thing. I'd make sure it didn't end well for him, either. On day 98, I found my base had been destroyed in another one of Agent Warden's evil rampages. The scientists, Isolager, and Skeleton Jackal were all destroyed too. Every member of my team, gone. This is unforgivable. I knew Agent Warden was my arch nemesis, but I never thought he'd go this far. I stood there in total shock for a long time until I heard some familiar heavy footsteps. Robbie. Agent Zozo. No, just Zozo. I'm sorry that I couldn't protect the rest of the team. He was too strong. Don't beat yourself up about it, Robbie. I feel a bit better knowing that at least my very first friend is still here with me. You know what? I feel the same way. You are alive, and I'm alive. We've got to do something to make that count. I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to take back the Destroyer, and then we're going to give Agent Warden payback for everything he's done. Now that's the symbiote I know. Let's rock. On day 99, Robbie and I closed in on Agent Warden's secret base, which hadn't changed location since the time I fought Pigless there. I'll learn Agent Warden out with a distraction, then you surprise attack him and steal the destroyer. Sounds good. Be careful, Robbie. I went to hide behind a tree as Robbie stepped out and waved his arms. Hey, Warden, look at me. I'm so destroyable. Ha ha, come destroy me. Sure enough, Agent Warden stepped out of the base with the destroyer in his hands. He started moving towards Robbie. Now is my chance. I used my dash ability to rush at Agent Warden. Just as planned, I was able to grab the destroyer and run away. Robbie turned and ran away too. Ha ha, I'm not destroyed. Better luck next time. When we got back to the base, I immediately took a closer look at the destroyer. It was definitely made with the same materials that made Agent Warden's sonic blast so strong. It was also from the end, like my symbiote. Maybe if I... Well, here goes nothing. I absorbed the material in the destroyer using my symbiote, and I could feel that it was enhancing my diamond skin to a whole new level of durability. It worked. Now my souped up diamond skin will be able to resist his sonic attacks. On day 100, I returned to Agent Warden's secret base for our final showdown. I, of course, brought Robbie with me. We entered his base and went downstairs. 
This time, Agent Warden was already waiting for us in his underground lair. This stops here, Agent Warden. You're not destroying anything else in your quest for mad science. When will you learn, symbiote? My sonic attacks will render you immobile once again. He fired a sonic blast at me, but I didn't even flinch this time. Because despite its name, the Destroyer had made me indestructible. How did you do that? I knew your weakness. It's like you always said, I am a diamond in the rough, and now this diamond is gonna rough you up. I called forth the Destroyer from within my symbiote and attacked using it. The shockwave smashed the surrounding area and did serious damage to Agent Warden. He's weak, my turn. Robbie rushed in and smacked him with his golem arms a couple times. I joined in with a diamond claw attack. Agent Warden tried to fight back, but his powers were useless against me now. Please, no more. This is for everyone at Area 52 and everyone at my base too. No, please. All I wanted was to be able to blow up whatever I wanted. I was just acting mysterious to look cool. Well, now the truth is out. And the truth is, you got what was coming to you. Then I swung the destroyer one last time and he was gone, leaving me and Robbie to celebrate the fact that the world was safe again. On day one, I spawned into the Amaranth Fields as a golden gorilla. Now it looks like I'm a gorillionaire. Well, a baby gorillionaire anyway. But I bet with my hard work, I can get bigger, stronger, and even shinier. My golden gorilla voice was a little too loud though, because it attracted the attention of someone who wasn't so nice. A strange green man in a crown emerged. Wee hee hee, tis me, the great and glorious Goblin King. All will bow to my excellence. Oh, uh, hi, Goblin King, uh, your highness. I'm Zozo, the golden gorilla. No, 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 this simply won't do. You're too shiny. Nobody should be shinier than my crown. I can't help how shiny I am, your highness, and I promise that I didn't mean to offend you. I don't care what you mean. I'm the Goblin King, and what I want, I get. And you're going to be a lot less shiny once my fully sick boys have beaten you senseless and buried you beneath the earth. Suddenly, some ogres emerged and started stomping towards me. All I could do was run for my life and get out of there, but I could still hear the Goblin King's shrill voice behind me. You can run, but you can't hide. We'll never give up, Sozo. Never! I kept running until I couldn't hear him anymore. Guess I'm going to need to topple the Goblin King if I want to get any peace around here. On day two, I started exploring more of the Amaranth Fields. It's pretty nice out here, but I guess looks can be deceiving if the Goblin King and his ogres are running around here. And I've only got 10 hearts. I'd better find something to eat, and fast! Luckily, I stumbled on an apple tree. I used all of my baby gorilla strength to shake the apples down from the tree and gobble them up. Mmm, that really hit the spot. I love apples. Good choice for your last meal then. <laughs> Get it? Because you're dead meat, shiny boy. I turned around and saw the Goblin King's ogres charging toward me. Uh-oh, I don't think I'm ready for a fight, but I guess I don't have a choice. They attacked me, and I tried my best to fight back, but they were way too tough for me, and there were so many of them. It's only my second day. It can't already be over for me. No! Hang on, little gorilla. I've got this. A gobber jumped into the fray, fighting off the ogres long enough for me to get away from them. Follow me. Let's get you out of here before more of these jokers show up. By the way, my name's Greg. I'm Zozo. On day three, I followed the friendly gobber to his campfire. Thank you for saving me. Don't sweat it, kid. Any enemy of the Goblin King is a friend of mine. He hates me just because I'm shiny and golden. Don't take it personally. That attention hog can't stand it if anyone else is special. That's why so many of us are trying to overthrow him. Everyone deserves to shine, not just that so-called king. Here, I got someone you should meet. The gobbler introduced me to a goblo sitting near the fire. I told the goblo that I was the Goblin King's latest target. Tough luck, Zozo. Sorry to hear that, but you're in the right place if you want to end the Goblin King's regime. We've been working on it for quite some time, and I get the feeling you'll be a great help. You'll need to get a lot stronger first, though. Think you can do that? Yes, I do! That's what I like to hear. First things first, you're gonna need a base. Get to work building one. I'll send Greg along to help you out. Thank you so much! 
Don't ever let them dull your shine, Zozo. From day four to day five, I got to work building a base. Before I can build anything, I'll need some wood and some tools. I gathered enough wood to craft a wood pickaxe, then use that pickaxe to gather some stone. Now I can use this to make a full set of tools. I'd better hurry up so I can build my base before it gets dark. I crafted a set of stone tools, and then it was finally time to build my base. A room for me and a room for Greg. There, looks pretty good. It's small, but I'll have time to build more later. Greg, come check out our new home. Sweet digs, kid. I like it. Great place to hang my hat for a little while. But you're not wearing a hat. Well, if I get a hat, I'll have a place to hang it. Hey, kid, look out behind you. I turned around and was jumped by a garch. This time, though, I had a sword to defend myself. I fought back and managed to defeat the nasty creature. Hey, I did it. Oh, I feel kind of funny. Suddenly, I grew bigger and I felt my heart's increase to 30. Awesome! I yelled with excitement and a blast of fire came out of my mouth. Careful with that fire breath, buddy. Don't burn the house down. Sorry. From day six to day eight, I took my new set of tools, improved strength, and super cool fire breath, and went out exploring. I traveled to the jungle, where I spotted a poor, innocent little Kato being attacked by a Shadoneer. Hey, cut that out! The Shadoneer didn't listen, so I had to make him listen with a blast of fire breath. He got pretty angry about being burned, but I had my sword ready to go, and we battled it out. The Shadoneer was tough, but I was tougher, and I managed to win the fight. You're safe now, little Kato. Thank you. I've never met a hero like you before, but I'm afraid I'm still not safe. I was trying to run away from a bigger, badder monster when that Shadoneer attacked me. See, my house was invaded by a reaver. He kicked me out and said if I tried to come back, he'd kill me. Could you help me get my home back? That's terrible. Of course I'll help. From day nine to day 10, I followed the little Kato to his house. And sure enough, there was a huge, scary looking reaver standing guard outside. Hey, I told you to clear out of here. Maybe you didn't learn your lesson last time. Do I need to tell you again with more pain? The only one who's gonna get hurt around here is you. What? You're here to fight me? Ha! <laughs> You're tiny, like a little gold statue of a gorilla. You don't scare me. Well, maybe this will. I opened my mouth and shot a blast of fire breath at the reaver, but he didn't even flinch. Ah, oh, thanks. I was getting kind of chilly. Now it's my turn. Uh-oh. He launched himself at me, knocking me back. He was way too strong. I don't think I'm ready for this fight. I'm so sorry, little Kato. We've got to run. But I promise I'll come back and finish the job once I'm strong enough. I ran away as fast as I could. The little Kato right by my side. Until we get your house back, you can come stay at my base with me. From day 11 to day 12, I escorted the little Kato back to my base. I'll need to build another room so he has somewhere to sleep. I got to work, and before long, I had added on a room for my new guest. Here you go. I hope you're comfortable here. Thank you so much. I wanted to give you something in return for letting me stay here, but I didn't have anything with me. So I hope you don't mind, but I added something to your base. Come take a look. He showed me a brand new storage hut. I figured you could keep things in here. Uh, weapons, I guess, or whatever you want. It's great. Thank you. Now you get some rest. I've got more work to do. Wait, before I do, are you the golden gorilla that the Goblin King is trying to get rid of? I sure am. Oh, I'm so sick of that Goblin King. He wasn't always in charge, you know. He came here a little while ago with an army of ogres and scared everyone into listening to him. No one even knows where he came from or if he's a real king at all. No wonder he's so worried about being outshined. Thanks for the info, little Kato. My name is Lyle, just by the way. I'm Zozo. Nice to meet you. Lyle went off to take a nap and I headed into a nearby cavern to do some mining. I gathered some iron ore, perfect for upgrading my gear. I used a furnace to smelt the ore into iron ingots and crafted an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. I still feel like the base is missing something. As I was brainstorming, I spotted a herd of sheep grazing nearby. Hey, sheep, why don't you come live with me? I built them a sheep farm to live in and herded them inside. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. 
From day 13 to day 15, I was trying to come up with ideas on how to grow stronger. I decided to talk to Greg and get some advice. Hey Greg, I'm running out of time to get strong enough to defeat the Goblin King. What can I do? Well, kid, when I want to get stronger, I get out of my comfort zone. Try going somewhere new, maybe find some new enemies. You'll never grow just staying in the same place all the time. Great idea. I'll go back to the jungle. That was a pretty intense place. I traveled back to the jungle and started exploring the unfamiliar terrain. While I was walking, I spotted some familiar faces. The ogres. They were too strong for me before, but I think I'm ready to try again. Hey, remember me? Hey, look, it's the golden gorilla. Let's get him, boys. I opened my mouth and shot fire breath at them, engulfing them in flames. Ouch! Where'd you learn to do that? I didn't answer the question. I just drew my iron sword and attacked again. This time, they were the ones who weren't prepared. And one by one, I defeated them all. I did it. I did it. Hey, what's this? There was a health potion on the ground. They must have dropped this. Well, finders keepers. I drank the health potion, and right away, my hearts increased to 60. Woohoo! I was doing a victory dance when I accidentally shot a fireball. Hey, that's new. I'm on fire here. From day 16 to day 19, I followed Greg's advice and kept exploring. My journey took me all the way to the desert. It sure is hot out here. I wish I had a nice shady tree to sit under. Oh, and some coconuts. But instead of coconuts, I found a book. The book of information. Information about what? I guess I'll see. It says the Goblin King was once a lonely little goblin underling, the lowest of the low. One day, he had enough of being bossed around. He snuck up on the leader of his kingdom, destroyed him with a sneak attack, and stole his crown. Now, he lives in fear of being seen as the fraud that he is and having someone take his place. Wow, I'd feel bad for him if he wasn't trying to kill me. Get that gorilla! I was suddenly ambushed by more of the Goblin King's ogres. But with my new fireball attack, they didn't stand a chance. I burnt them all to a crisp and vanquished them. Hey, I'm getting pretty good at this whole fighting thing. From day 20 to day 22, I traveled back home to my base. It's time to go back into the mines and see if I can upgrade my gear some more. I entered the mine and quickly found some iron ore. After I smelted it into ingots, I was able to craft an iron chest plate. With my new attack, my new strength, and this armor, I think I can finally fight that reaver. So I traveled back to Lyle's house, where that nasty reaver was still stomping around like he owned the place. Back for more. Can't get enough of the taste of the feet. You can't just take people's houses. I'm going to show you what happens when you do. I hit him with a fireball, and this time it worked. It knocked him back. While he was recovering, I got my sword and rushed at the reaver, swinging my blade as hard as I could. He attacked me, but I came back at him even harder. A couple of hits later, he was down. Wee hee hee! Well, look at that! You're getting stronger, I see! It was the Goblin King! He was watching me from behind a nearby tree! I'll have to send stronger minions to get rid of you, it seems! No matter! I will! I always get what I want, you know! Only because you sneak up on people! You'll never win in a fair fight! Well, we'll have to see about that, won't we? I have grand plans for your demise, Zozo! Such grand plans! Wee hee hee hee! And with that, he disappeared. From day 23 to day 26, I ran back to my base as fast as I could. My encounter with the Goblin King had shaken me up a little bit, but I was still excited to give Lyle the good news about his house. Lyle! Lyle! Guess what? The Reaver is finally gone! Really? That's amazing, but... Oh no, what is it? It's just, I've been having so much fun staying here with you guys. Do you think I could keep living here instead? Sure, stay as long as you want. With that settled, I ventured back into the mines to look for some more iron ore. After I found enough, I smelted it into ingots and crafted a new iron helmet and a pair of shiny iron boots. While I was trying on my new armor, Lyle came to see me. Hey Zozo, as a thanks for everything, I built a perimeter wall around the base to help keep us safe. So nothing like the reaver attack ever happens here. I went outside and checked it out. That's amazing, I feel safer already. From day 27 to day 31, I headed back out to the desert to continue exploring in the harsh climate. I was kicking around the sand, getting lost in my thoughts, when I saw something. A silver lobo sat under a palm tree. Hey, you're the gold guy who beat up all those ogres. I sure am. 
Well, that was super neat of you. If you're still in a heroic mood, I could use some help. Any chance you have a place I could stay for a while? The Goblin King doesn't like how, uh, how silver I am. And I'm scared he'll send more ogres after me. He's doing the same thing to me for being gold. I'd be happy to help. Follow me back to my base. You can stay there. The Silver Lobo and I headed back to my base. And when we got there, I'd take a second to shear my sheep and gather some wool. Hey, this gives me an idea. I decided to hang some decorative banners on my base just to spice up the place. These really class up the place. Sweet banners, kid, but sorry to interrupt. Goblo needs our help. Who? Goblo the Goblo. You met him when I saved you. Now it's your turn to help me save him. Quick, let's go. From day 32 to day 35, Greg and I traveled back to the Goblo's campfire to see what was going on. When we got there, a whole horde of ogres was making a mess of the place. Goblo was way outnumbered. Goblo, we're here to help. Oh, how sweet. Baby Gorilla thinks he can save his friend. Well, you're too late, loser. I shot a fireball at them, destroying them in one hit. But when Greg and I rushed over to check on Goblo, he was already halfway gone. Thank you for coming, boys, but I'm afraid they were too much for me. I, I don't have a lot of time left, Zozo. You can finish what I couldn't. Defeat the rest of the ogres. I will. And just like that, Goblo was gone. From day 36 to day 39, I didn't want to go home after losing Goblo. I needed to get my mind off of things. So instead, I traveled to the jungle to look for some bad guys to fight or someone to help. I just need something useful to do. Are you talking to me? There was a rouge tomato suddenly staring at me. No, I was talking to myself. Ah, uh, well, could you be talking to me? If you're trying to be useful, I need some help. Sure, what's going on? Well, I need help taking on a rattlesnake near here. He's really messing up the neighborhood, kicking everybody out. I need some muscle to get him to lay off. You got it. It didn't take me long to find the rattlesnake. He was hissing and pacing back and forth, looking for trouble. Well, he found it, and trouble was me. I took him out with a few quick fireballs and a finishing move with my sword. Your rattlesnake problem is all taken care of. Thanks, you're a swell guy. Not like that freak in the crown who came through here earlier. The Goblin King? Yeah, that's him. Said he's trying to recruit new goons to help him get rid of some gold monkey or something. Sounds like a bad scene. And seems like the kind of guy who doesn't ever fight his own fights, but still wants to act like a tough guy. If you're not a fighter, just admit it to yourself. That's what I did, and it worked out. Yup, thanks for the info. Yeah, forget about it. From day 40 to day 43, I left the friendly, but kind of weird, rouge tomato behind and walked back to my base. When I got there, Greg was waiting for me and he looked excited about something. Hey kid, I thought we could both use some cheering up. So I added some couches to the base for hanging out. And I was thinking, maybe we could invite some more friends to stay here with us. Absolutely, the more the merrier. Great, my other gobble friend should be here soon. A little while later, Greg's friend arrived and settled in. Nice to meet ya. After a while, the Silver Lobo I helped out before came to find me. You've already done so much for me, but could I ask for one more favor? I left my favorite book behind, and I can't go back and get it without being attacked by some really scary monsters. Could you go look for it for me? I'll do my best to get your book back. We can put it on one of those shelves when I do. From day 44 to day 49, I trudged out to the desert to look for the Silver Lobo's book. I don't see any books, I just see a ton of sand. I don't like sand at all. It's so coarse and rough and it gets everywhere. As I was digging through the sand looking for the book, the Goblin King ran up from behind me. Wee hee hee! Tremble in fear! It's me! I'm not scared of you. Oh, but you should be! You think I'll only stop with your demise? No, 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 silly Zozo! I'm going to get rid of everything shiny in this land! Every living thing that is silver, gold, diamond, that glitters and shimmers brightly! My crown will be the only shiny thing left! And then no one will doubt my authority as king! Or you could try being a kind and just ruler. Ugh, are you kidding me? That sounds terrible! Sorry, Zozo, but I have to run! Bear with me! What? Sorry, I miss out! I am a bear with me! Enjoy fighting my bear! The Goblin King ran off, and a massive, hulking grizzly bear ran in! From day 50 to day 53, I faced off against the Goblin King's mighty grizzly bear. The grizzly bear charged at me. I fought back with a fireball and jumped out of the way before he could scratch me with his claws. But the bear was tough 
and he came at me again. This is my hardest fight yet. It was difficult, and the bear was much bigger and stronger than me, but I was better at dodging. And I had fire powers that most bears don't have. And all of that helped me win in the end. Phew, that was a close one. I'm glad I made it. Ooh, sparkly. The grizzly bear dropped a diamond on the ground during the fight. I should take it with me. I bet I'll need it later. From day 54 to day 57, I continued my search for the Silver Lobo's book. She said there were scary monsters involved, but I haven't seen anything but sand and that bear, but that wasn't normal for this place, I'm pretty sure. Finally, I happened upon a specter. I don't think it's that scary, but I bet that's what she's talking about. Hey, did you take someone's book? The specter didn't answer me. It just started attacking. Well, I guess that's your answer. Fireball! I blasted the specter with a fireball and I totally vaporized it. Sure enough, it dropped the book. What's this book about anyway? Seems like a lot of trouble for one little book. Oh, it says my diary on it. No wonder she wanted it back. I ran back to my base and delivered the book to the Silver Lobo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're the nicest golden gorilla I've ever met. Not that I've met any others. There used to be more of you, I've heard, and other gold creatures. But the Goblin King has been getting rid of them ever since he took the throne. It's just terrible. Well, I can't let him get away with it anymore. From day 58 to day 62, I expanded my sheep pen to make room for even more sheep. There, now you guys can spread out a bit more and have some room to roam. They didn't say anything back, but I think they were happy about it. Next, I returned to the mines. The diamond the bear dropped got me thinking. I wanna craft some diamond gear. I gathered some diamonds and used them, along with the diamond the bear dropped to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. Now I'm even shinier than ever. Take that, Goblin King. When I climbed back out of the mines and went back to my base, Greg was waiting for me. Welcome back, kid. Since we've got more folks staying with us now, I took the liberty of letting them invite even more friends over. Hopefully you don't mind. Of course I don't mind. You know what I say, the more the merrier. From day 63 to day 66, I tried to decide where to go next. I need to keep getting stronger so I can stop the Goblin King from carrying out his evil plans. But what should I do next? Sozo, I just got a letter from my friend in the lush tundra. She said that there is some kind of dangerous creature out there making trouble, and it might be working for the Goblin King. If you play your cards right, you could get fighting experience and some information, all at the same time. Wow, that's like getting two things with only one thing. Awesome. I traveled to the lush tundra, and a huge warped toad leapt into my path. Uh-oh, this must be the creature making trouble. I got my sword ready and was taking a deep breath to unleash some fire on the toad when she spoke. Wait, no! I'm Alex, Lyle's friend. I'm the one who asked for your help. You're Zozo, right? Oh, sorry, my mistake. So if you're not the one I'm here to fight, who is? From day 67 to day 70, Alex the Warped Toad led me to the danger she had told me about, a warped Moscow hovering menacingly above the ground. There it is. Think you can help? I sure do. Time to squash that bug. Be careful. That's one mean Moscow. I listened to Alex's warning and I approached the warped Moscow slowly. But as soon as it saw me, it started buzzing aggressively and swooped at me. I had to dodge and counter with a fireball. The warped Moscow couldn't get away in time and the fireball hit it, knocking it down. I took my chance to finish it off right then and there. I did it. Your Moscow troubles are over, Alex. Thank you so much. Lyle wasn't kidding. You really are a hero. I'm just trying my best. I only hope I'm going to be enough of a hero to take on the Goblin King. From day 71 to day 74, I decided to explore the lush tundra a bit more. I already came all the way out here. I might as well get a good look. As I was exploring, I spotted a sign that spelled out Z-O-Z. -Z. I didn't know what that means, but it's almost my name. That reminds me, if you want to see more Zozo videos, you can find them by searching Z-O-Z-O. -Z I arrived in a new part of the lush tundra and saw a chest there. Oh, I wonder what's inside. When I opened it, there was nothing in there. Oh, that's disappointing. Wee -hee 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 -hee. Sorry to see you so sad, Zozo. Just kidding. I love to see you sad. <laughs> You'll never beat me. I was so angry, I shot a fireball at the Goblin King, but he dodged it and attacked me. He was still way too strong for me to fight him and win. Just you wait, I'll get stronger and then you'll know how it feels to lose. I didn't want to, but I had to get out of there. 
From day 75 to day 78, I ran all the way back to my base. When I finally got there, I was so mad that I locked myself in my room. I can't believe I had to run away like that. I'm such a loser. I heard someone outside of my room, and when I went to check, the Silver Lobo was standing there. Sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to show you something. I've been adding on to the base. Want to come look? Okay. I followed her, and she led me to a new watchtower. You built this for me? I wanted to cheer you up. It'll help keep us all a lot safer, in case the Goblin King tries anything sneaky. That's so great. Thank you. I feel better already. I've also got something that might help, too. Greg came over and handed me a novelty hat. It's silly, but I told you a home is a good place to hang your hat. So I got you a hat. When I put the hat on, I felt a lot better and stronger, too. Before I knew it, my heart's increased to 100. I jumped for joy, and I jumped way higher than usual. Whoa, a jump boost. Thank you so much. From day 79 to day 84, I ventured back out into the lush tundra to look for the Goblin King. Now that I'm stronger, I want to try and fight him again. I looked all over, but didn't see him anywhere. I did see some black death, though. Close enough for now. Still an evil force I can test out my new strength on. I fought the black death and beat it easily. When I did, I was approached by a grateful rat. Ooh, that was very impressive fighting. I couldn't help but notice your shiny diamond sword. Someone dropped this and I picked it up to keep. But I think you should have it. Hey -ya! The rat gave me diamond leggings. This is perfect. From day 85 to day 89, I took my new diamond leggings and traveled back home to my base. When I got there, I was shocked to see Ogre stamping all over the place, tearing it down. No, get out of here. <laughs> oh no, did you think we wouldn't find you? Smash, 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 smash the whole place to bits. I shot a fireball at the ogres and they ran off into the fields. Ah, uh, no you don't. I chased after them as fast as I could. As I was pursuing the ogres, a rat jumped in front of me. Quickly, could you tell me the way to the lush tundra? My cousin lives there. I pointed him in the right direction. Thanks, you're a pal. With another good deed done, I continued my chase. From day 90 to day 94, I dragged the ogres all the way to a castle. This must be Goblin King's palace. I'd better not get too close. I'm sure he's got guards all over the place. I'll focus on these jokers for now. I decided to shoot a fireball at the guard at the castle entrance. That's what you get for messing with my home. Ouch! Get a boss! Is the Goblin King here? No, no. He won't dirty his hands fighting you, little gorilla. That's my job. A plague beast emerged and came running at me. He attacked me before I could do anything, and the blow knocked me back. Uh-oh, this guy is really strong. This won't be easy. From day 95 to day 97, I continued my battle against the Plague Beast. It was, by far, my most dangerous fight yet. I've got to make it through this. I can't let the Goblin King win. He's already won, fool. There are only a handful of days left before his army will sweep the land, imprisoning any that dare to try to outshine the king. No, I won't let that happen. I used my jump boost to jump out of the way of his next attack and blasted him with a fireball. Then I came at him with my diamond sword and finally turned the tide of the fight. I was going to win. For my final attack, I jumped high and hit him where he least expected it. It seems I underestimated you. Perhaps you will win after all. If you can best the Goblin King himself in a one-on-one -on -one fight, that is. <laughs> I will, no matter what. I'm going to do whatever it takes to defeat the Goblin King once and for all. And just like that, the Plague Beast was defeated. On day 98, I returned to my base with a renewed sense of purpose. This golden gorilla is going to win. I just know it. I've come a long way, and I know I still have room to improve, but I feel like a real hero now. Brighter, stronger, and shinier than ever. First, the Silver Lobo spoke to me. You are Zozo. Here, take this health potion for help on your quest. I believe in you. We all deserve to shine, and you shine brighter than anyone I've ever met. That means a lot. Thank you. And then, Greg. Hey, kid. I'm proud of you. Don't leave without your hat, okay? I would never. And finally, Lyle. Remember, the Goblin King only wins fights by sneaking up on people. Don't let him sneak up on you, and you'll be able to defeat him. Thank you for believing in me. I'll try my best. 
On day 99, I set off on my journey to the Goblin King's castle. I passed through the lush tundra on my way and remembered my success there. I was able to help so many people, and if I can pull this off, it'll help so many more. Finally, I reached the castle. It was crawling with ogre guards. I'll never get through all of them without the Goblin King finding out I'm here. If he does, he'll be able to sneak up on me. As I was trying to come up with a plan, Alex, the warped toad, jumped out of hiding and started attacking the ogres. Alex, you came to help me. We toads believe in reciprocity. You helped me, I help you. Now get inside and finish this. Alex led the ogres away and I began to sneak into the castle. On day 100, I crept my way into the castle. That's where I saw the Goblin King looking at horses. I thought about attacking him, but I realized that would be wrong. I'm not like him. I want a fair fight. Hey, stop horsing around. Hmm? What? What's happening? Oh, wee hee hee Zozo, I see. You've come to my palace to turn yourself in? No, I'm here to fight you. Fair and square. No tricks. A Goblin King always has a few tricks up his sleeve. Suddenly, he turned invisible, and I lost sight of him. Uh-oh, he's somewhere in here, trying to sneak up on me. I listened carefully, and when I heard him moving, I used my jump boost to jump out of the way of his ambush. Ha, gotcha! I spotted him and launched a fireball at him. It hit! Ow, 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 no! You're not supposed to be so good at this! I'm supposed to win! I always win! Not anymore! I attacked with my sword next. He fought back, but I was stronger than him. I had learned how to defeat the forces of evil, and after a difficult fight, I finally did. The Goblin King crown fell on the floor at my feet. If I were like you, I'd take this, but I don't want to be king. I just want to go home and hang out with my friends. I'm ending this reign of terror here and now. And with one last fireball, I finished him off. It was finally over. I did it. Time to go home, hug my friends, and take a well-deserved nap. From now on, things are going to be good as gold. On day one, I spawned as a golden hydra. Whoa, this is amazing. I looked around and noticed that I was in some sort of cave. I ventured out and immediately saw some scary dread knights. There he is. Catch him. No, thanks. I scurried away, the men following after me. You come back here. They started shooting darts at me. Ah! One dart hit me and I lost some hearts. Wait, I only have five hearts? This is insane. I hurried and tried to get away, but the men were too fast. They surrounded me as I felt my eyes start to close. Perfect. Everything is coming together. And with that, I passed out. On day two, I woke up in a cage. Oh, where am I? I looked around and noticed that there were more cages around me, but most of them were empty. I almost didn't notice the frog sitting in the cage nearby. He blended in with the floor really well. I was waiting for you to wake up. Come on, we gotta get out of here. But how? Even if we can get out of the cages, I don't know how to get out of the prison. I know a way out, but you need to be the one to unlock the door. I looked closer and examined the gate. I began to hit it with my heads, but that started to make me feel dizzy. The frog laughed at me. Oh, no, no, use your fire spit. Fire spit? I did what the frog said, and I spit at the lock. But it wasn't fire, it was golden little orbs. I left the cage and started firing away at the frog's cage until it opened too. Thanks. Don't mention it. I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm Freddy. Freddy and I made our way over to the exit and broke through the door, up the stairs. We were home free. On day three, Freddy and I hurried as fast as we could away from the underground prison. While we were running, I spotted some pigs and chickens and hurried to gather their meat before they could scamper away. I gathered up their meat and shared some with Freddy. We both chowed down. Thanks, Zozo. And I gotta say, that prison break was amazing. I didn't know you could spit gold. Neither did I. In fact, I didn't know much about anything, except that some evil guys were after me. Freddy and I agreed to go our separate ways. I went further into the forest to explore. Maybe I would find some other hydras. Little hydra. Huh? I turned and saw an old troll walking slowly up behind me. He looked hurt. Would you mind helping me? I was attacked and need to get back home before it gets dark. Of course. We slowly made our way to his home, a little cottage next to a river. Thank you, little Hydra. Please come inside so that you are safe. There are all kinds of monsters outside. The guy seemed nice enough, so I stayed with him for the night. 
On days four to five, I woke up in the troll's house. He had cooked some stew for both of us. Thank you. What did you say your name was? I'm Horace, just a poor old troll trying to make his way in the world. Horace seemed better than yesterday, but still very tired. Is there anything I can do to help you? Actually, I'm more concerned for your safety. You are the Golden Hydra after all. The Golden Hydra? A prophecy was given many years ago by a great seer. She said that a Golden Hydra would be born and it would be his destiny to either save or destroy the land. Is that me? I believe it is. What should I do? Build yourself a safe house, gather materials, strengthen yourself as much as you can. You need to be at your best. Horace gave me some stone tools and a full stack of oak planks. Use these to start. I hope to hear from you, little Hydra. Be careful who you trust. I left Horace's house to find a good place to start a base. I found a nearby lake on the plains with some nice level ground. I used my stone tools to gather additional material and started working on a modest Japanese-style gold hydra base. It may have only been one building for me so far, but there was plenty of room on the plains for this base to expand with more buildings and features. It was all coming together when I heard some men yelling. There's the hydra! Get him! It was more of those evil dread knights! Not today, you goons! I spit my orbs at them, and they all turned to gold! Oh, wow! That is not what I expected! Just then, I felt power rush through me, and I grew into a larger hydra! Now I have 11 hearts! Nice! I'll beat whoever controls those dread knights in no time! On day 6 to 8, I ventured from my base to gather more information. Also, I wanted to see if I could find more creatures that needed shelter from the mysterious villain and his men. I came across some tortoises who immediately tried to run away. Hey, I'm a friend! They looked at me warily. You aren't working with the sorcerer? No, a sorcerer? Is that who's commanding all the Dread Knights? I have nothing to do with him. Look, kid, it would just be better if you left this land. It's not safe for you. The tortoises slipped away, leaving me confused. I decided to go back to Horace's house to ask him about it. A great sorcerer has purged this land and intends to use your power for his purposes. He will stop at nothing to get you. That's awful! What should I do? There is a cave nearby that has some armor and tools that we could use. I was on my way there the other day when I was attacked. That's a good place to start. Sounds like a plan. On days 9 to 10, I hurried to the cave that Horace mentioned and went to explore. Sure enough, there was a chest hidden behind some rocks. Just as I was about to open it, a great hairy spider came rushing out. Ugh, gross! He attacked me, and I was too slow to spit my golden orbs. I took quite a bit of damage. Ouch! I hurried and slithered from the cave. This is too hard. I can't defeat him by myself. Hey, are you trying to get rid of that spider too? A wolf came out from behind a tree. Yeah, I am. Why do you want him gone? He took some of my armor. I'm trying to keep myself safe from the sorcerer's goons. Me too. Maybe we can work together. We came up with a plan and went back down to the spider's lair. The wolf distracted him and I shot my golden orbs at him. He turned immediately into a gold statue. Wow! We gathered the materials in the chest and I gave the wolf the reptile armor. Be careful out there. Zozo. Zozo. I'm Lex. Thanks, Lex. Take care of yourself. On days 11 to 12, I returned to Horus. At first, he was happy, but when I told him that I'd given Lex the armor from the chest, he got really mad. The other animals don't matter, little Hydra. What matters is that you're strong. He was acting really weird, but I couldn't blame him. He was probably scared of the sorcerer and just wanted us to be safe. You've done well, but this isn't enough. Now you must travel to the Black Forest and gather more strength potions left there by wizards of yore. This is important, little Hydra. Don't trust anyone besides me. Defeat anyone who stands in your way. I left the house, wondering why Horace didn't want me to trust anyone else. He was probably just paranoid. As I made my way to the Black Forest, I saw some more of the sorcerer's goons traveling along the river. I tried to be quiet and slither away, but they spotted me. It's the Hydra! Grab him! I dodged some of their darts and shot my golden orbs at them. They tried to escape, but after a few shots, they were all statues. Nice! I soon reached the depths of the Black Forest, hoping to gather the potions Horus wanted. 
On days 13 to 15, I plucked up the courage to enter the sinister black forest. At first, there didn't seem to be anyone there, but I kept looking, wanting to find those potions. After just a few moments, I saw a family of hoglins gathered around a campfire, harmlessly warming themselves. Why does Horus want me to defeat these hoglins? They seem really nice. I slithered in, and the hoglins were taken aback. I don't mean you any harm, I'm just curious if you have any armor. The hoglins were cautious, but one answered me. Are you going to try to steal it from us like the others? Others? What others? A sorcerer's men. They have tried to steal it before. They want all the armor taken away from the creatures in the land, so they can't fight the sorcerer. What? That didn't seem right. I needed to talk to Horus about this. On days 16 to 19, I traveled back to Horus's house. I arrived, and he seemed happy to see me. But when I told him I couldn't get the strength potions from the Black Forest, he immediately turned angry. Don't you know what's at stake? You needed to get those potions. You need to get stronger. Why is it so important that I'm stronger? You are not fulfilling my expectations. I need to think this through. He told me to leave. I did, more confused than before. When I arrived back at my base, Freddy Frog was there. Hey, buddy, it's been a while. Zozo, I'm so glad you're okay. I heard that you met the sorcerer. How did you survive? What do you mean? I haven't met him. All the creatures have seen him hiding out in the woods. He's disguised as a simple old troll. Wait, was he talking about Horus? I heard he's planning an attack with his goons today. He's going to the village in the plains. I had to see for myself if this was true. It couldn't be Horus, could it? I went with Freddy to the village in the plains like he said. When we got there, I saw the goons being led by a very recognizable troll. I looked closer and realized it was Horus. You manipulated me. Horus turned toward me. Oh, Zozo, you gullible little Hydra. You are too quick to trust, but you've been a hindrance. Time for a change of plans. You had no right to do that to me, and you have no right to steal from innocent creatures and people. I charged at him, spewing golden orbs. He easily outmaneuvered them, and with his powerful swing, threw me back into a building. Before I knew it, I blocked out. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with Freddy looking down at me. Oh good, you're awake. You need to help the villagers. I got up and followed Freddy to the village. Some of the buildings were on fire. Everyone, move away from the buildings. I hurried and spewed my orbs at them, extinguishing the fires. It was definitely not what the villagers were expecting. Whoa, this is amazing. How can we repay you? It might not be safe here anymore. You can all live at my base with me. I have lots of room. The villagers talked amongst themselves for a little while, then readily agreed. We made our way to my base and then gathered some needed supplies for the new houses. It was hard work, but in no time, everyone had a house of their own. Thank you, Zozo. These look amazing. On days 23 to 26, I went back to the cave where I originally spawned. It must have been important, so I figured that I should investigate. I entered the cave and it seemed very normal. I was hoping to find some sort of clue as to who my parents were. It had been a crazy couple of days, and even though I had friends, I wondered if I had family. All of a sudden, I heard a noise coming from deeper in the cave. I explored further and saw another Hydra but she was being attacked by a group of skeletons. Get away from her! I slithered down and started shooting the skeletons. Within just a few moments, those bags of bones were gone. I turned to the Hydra, but then I felt a power surge through me. I grew, and then I leveled up into an adult Hydra. I now have 18 hearts. I let out a large breath of golden fire. So-so? The Hydra looked scared of me. No need to be scared. Who are you? I'm your mother. My mother? Uh, I'm so glad I found you. Where did you go? I laid an egg and went to find some food. But when I came back, you were gone. I was so worried about you. How about you come live with me? I have a base and it'll be much safer than this cave. She happily agreed and we made our way in that direction. On days 27 to 31, as my mother and I left the cave, we happened upon Freddy again. Hey, Zozo, do you think you could help my family? He directed me toward a small alcove nearby that had been broken apart. What happened? 
The sorcerer's goons tried to break our alcove after we refused to leave. We managed to escape before anyone was hurt, but we don't have a home now. The frogs looked very sad, so I offered to build them a new home on my base. Really? That would be great! Thank you so much! With the frogs and my mother in tow, we continued on our way to my base. Once we arrived, we got straight to work, building a pond for the frogs and placing down a bed for my mother. I also noticed that the villagers had planted crops and gathered some animals. They even made a nice path connecting all the buildings. Thanks, guys! You've done some great work here! It was all starting to come together! I will get that golden hydra if it's the last thing I do! He is the key to all of my plans! What would you like me to do, master? I want you to follow him. Make sure he is met with challenges. He needs to reach maximum strength by the full moon. It's vital that you do this. Yes, master. On days 32 to 35, I wanted to return to the underground prison where Freddy and I were held. If Horace wanted to befriend me, why did he capture me in the first place? That's a good question. Maybe there are some answers at the prison. I asked Freddy if he wanted to come with me, and he readily agreed. We made our way down the tower where we had escaped, and noticed that there were iron golems standing around this time. That's new, and they don't look like they work for Horus. I wasn't expecting you to come back here. I flipped around to see one of the iron golems standing right behind me. Are you one of the guards? Not exactly. I bartered with some of Horus's goons that are corrupt. They agreed to give you to me as a bargaining chip. We weren't expecting you to escape so quickly, however. So you're not my enemy. You just want to sabotage him. Basically. So... Perhaps we can make an arrangement to stop him. What do you have in mind? I'll be in touch. I have some research to do. Just look out for a message from Puck the Honorable. Honorable? You captured my friend Freddy. Sorry, what can I say? I like frog legs. I heard Freddy gulp behind me. Don't worry, I won't eat your friend, but we'll be in touch, Zozo. And just like that, he left without even saying goodbye. Not very polite, but okay. On days 36 to 39, I went venturing into a nearby cave to find some iron ore that could help buff out my equipment. After I found enough, I built a furnace, smelted some iron ingots, and finally made myself an iron sword, iron pickaxe, and some armor. Cool! Looking good! I went digging deeper and even managed to find some diamonds. Yes! Jackpot! This will be great for some upgrades! Before I could start crafting, I heard a noise and something hit me! I turned and saw a skeleton moving around trying to shoot me again. I spewed my golden fire breath at him. Nice! The skeleton froze, but not before dropping his bow. I picked it up and realized it was enchanted. Infinite arrows, sweet. I returned to my base with the supplies and the bow, hoping to upgrade some of my items and the houses. One of the villagers approached me. Zozo, do you think you could help me with something? Sure, what is it? Bradley, and it's about our home. I thought I had gathered everything when we came here, but I left something important there. Would you come with me? I don't feel safe going by myself. Of course, let's go! On days 40 to 43, Bradley and I ventured back to the village on the plains. We hurried to the house to grab his item. What is it you needed so badly? He rummaged around his room under his bed and then whooped in victory. Got it! Is that a paintbrush? Yeah, it's my lucky paintbrush. Are you serious? It's important to me. I shook my head. What a weird kid. But hey, at least he has it now. All of a sudden, I heard a noise outside. Shh, I think there's someone here. I looked out the window, and sure enough, there was some of Horace's goons rummaging around. But they weren't alone. They were being led by a terrifying yak this time. We tried to sneak out quietly, but Bradley made a noise, and they spotted us. Smooth move, Bradley. The goons charged at us, and I started to spew golden fire. Within just a few moments, we had nearly taken out all of the goons. The henchman just stood, watching us. Then after a moment, he ran off with the remaining men. Coward! We looked around and noticed the goons had dropped a few healing potions before I had frozen them into gold. Nice! Now we have a little bit bigger of a potion stash, just in case. Sheesh, that was awesome! Was the paintbrush worth it, Bradley? Absolutely! On days 44 to 49, Bradley and I traveled back to the base. Once we arrived, I found a note on my door. 
Hawk the Honorable sent me a message to meet outside my base near the river. It didn't take me long to find him. I've been doing some research about Horus and his plans. I think that if you were able to create a certain item, you can overpower Horus. Right! What is it? An amethyst sword. It's the one thing that will harm Horus, even if he reaches the full extent of his magical powers. And it may just save your life. What do I need to do? You'll need to gather two amethyst crystals and a stick. That's all you'll need to make it. Though I can't promise those crystals won't be guarded by an incredibly dangerous mob. Great. Sounds like a walk in the park. What? You expected saving the world to be easy. Oh, I just wish I hadn't been duped by Horus in the first place. Don't beat yourself up, kid. You'll get the hang of it. Huck handed me a paper with some instructions on it. This should help you. And just like that, he left. Again. I need to tell him it's polite to say your goodbyes. On days 50 to 53, I followed the instructions Puck gave me to find the crystals. It said to go to a cave and consult with the ancient being. I realized that it had led me back to the cave where I had fought the giant spider. As I entered, I noticed that the spider was still there, frozen in gold. He must be the ancient being. I wonder if there's a way I can reverse it. I went up to the spider and tried to shoot an orb at him. Nothing. A fire breath and also nothing. Then I tried to punch him. Suddenly, he turned back into his normal self. He looked down at me angrily. How dare you freeze me? I'm sorry. I was manipulated by the sorcerer to steal your items. But you did steal some of them from the wolf. He softened a little. I did. I was desperate and needed extra protection. Clearly, it did not work. What do you want? I was told that you have information about amethyst crystals. Yes, I was once a guardian of a great multitude of crystals. But I was forced to leave when the cavern was ambushed by an evil warden. It has been a great many years since then. Can you show me where it is? I cannot. When I desired to go back, it was no longer there. Some sort of shifting due to magic. I thanked the spider and left the cave. It was just another dead end. On my way back to the base, I noticed more of Horace's goons fighting a wolf. Hey, that's Lex. Maybe he'll want to help me. I approached as he finished the goons off. Hey, remember me? Zozo, you're alive! Yeah, I am, and I'm trying to defeat the sorcerer. I could really use your skills. Would you want to help me? I don't think I can, Zozo. I'm good at fighting his goons, but he's too powerful. I think you'd be better off on your own. Before I could even argue, he ran off into the distance. Well, that was underwhelming. Maybe he'll change his mind. On days 54 to 57, I went exploring a little more. I found myself close to where I had found Horus that first time. I wondered if he was still at his house. I decided to investigate. When I got closer, I heard voices. The master needs some items taken to him. Make sure they get there safely. It was the henchman I had seen earlier, the Yak. He had a few goons and he was dragging some chests of things. It seemed like a good opportunity to attack. Hey! Coward! The henchman turned toward me. You just can't get enough, can you? He sent the goons forward to attack. I maneuvered around them easily, and within a few moments, most of them were gold statues. The henchman got mad. Before I knew it, he attacked me. Ouch! How is he so fast? I felt my heart's dwindling. He slashed at me again, faster than any other human I had encountered. I tried to breathe my golden fire at him, but it was in vain. I need to get out of here. I hurried and slithered away, retreating into the bushes. Look who's the coward now. The henchman ran off. I didn't dare follow him. I was too weak and needed to go back home. If I can't defeat just one henchman, how am I supposed to defeat a sorcerer? He managed to take out a few of your men, master, but he could not withstand my blows. He is not even close to being ready. Yes, he is weak, but he will get stronger. Just keep attacking. Send out as many men as possible. They're disposable. We'll do, master. On days 58 to 62, I made it back to my base. I was met with a much needed surprise. Zozo, we made you something, sweetie. My mom led me to the edge of the base. Whoa, is this a statue of me? It was a hydra, but it wasn't completely gold. It was more of an orange color. Actually, it's a statue of your father. My father? I wanted to tell you earlier, but I didn't know if you were ready. He died right before you were born. 
He was trying to protect us. He couldn't wait to meet you, Zozo. I looked up at the statue. It's amazing. It's not done yet. We still need some more quartz for the teeth. Would you like to help us? Of course. I headed to the desert where I had previously seen some ruins made out of quartz and collected those materials for the statue. After giving the quartz to mom, she quickly added the teeth to the statue and now it truly looked magnificent. On days 63 to 66, I woke up to someone calling my name. I went outside. It was Lex. Hey, Lex, what's up? I went back to that cave with the spider and to my surprise, he wasn't a gold statue anymore. Oh yeah, I should have warned you. No harm done. He actually told me that you were looking for a cavern with amethyst crystals in it. I think I might actually know where that is. Really? Show me. Lex led the way to a small desert. We finally arrived at what looked like a rock formation with a door. Great. Let's just push open the door and head inside. We tried to push, pull, and roll, but the stone didn't budge. I even tried my golden fire on it. No luck. Hmm. Maybe there's a special combination or code word? Maybe, but I have no idea what it might be. It was disappointing, but now I knew where it was. At least I could come back to it later. Let's head back. How about you stay with us? You don't have to be alone, Lex. He sighed. I know, I was wrong and scared, but I know you're our best chance at stopping the sorcerer. Thanks for not giving up on me. Of course, that's what friends do. Lex smiled and we headed home. On day 67 to 70, Bradley approached me again. Hey, Zozo, do you think you could help me with something else? Is it another paintbrush, Bradley? No, actually, I wanted to practice shooting with the bow I have. Do you think you could help me with some target practice? Of course, where did you have in mind? There's actually an archery area near my old house. Maybe we can even bring some of the stuff back to the base. That sounds like a great idea. We headed back toward Bradley's old home. When we got there, we noticed some movement outside the houses. Hey, those are the tortoises I met earlier. They told me to take a hike. Maybe we should go. Then I noticed the tortoises were fighting each other over some food. I approached carefully. Hey, friends, remember me? Ugh, you again. We don't need your help, Hydra. You're just making things worse for us. The sorcerer and his goons have driven us out of our homes, and now we hardly have food. The leader came toward me and snapped his teeth. I don't want to hurt you. He snapped at me again, and I had no choice but to spew golden fire at him. After he turned into a statue, I punched him. He quickly came back to life, looking surprised. Why did you do that? Like I said, I'm not here to hurt you. In fact, we would love for you to stay at our base. It's safe, and there's plenty of food. There's no need to fight each other. Thank you, Hydra. We are in your debt. On days 71 to 74, we made it back to the base. This time, we were met with an unwanted surprise. My mom rushed out to us. Zozo, they're attacking the base. We need your help. I slithered over and saw the yak and his dread knights waiting for me. Hey, you don't belong here. The henchman looked at me and just like before, attacked in a flash. I still wasn't strong enough, but I knew I needed to protect my friends. Using all of my strength, I let out the largest burst of golden fire I could muster. Not bad, Hydra, but not good enough. Come and find me when you are ready. I'll be waiting with your precious friend. And before I knew it, the henchman left. I had managed to statuify his goons, but he escaped, again. Wait, what did he say about a friend? I slithered inside as fast as I could and realized that my mother was nowhere to be found. Mom? Mom! He took her and I had no idea where she went. I retreated to my house, blind with rage. And then I started to cry. This was all too much. How was I ever supposed to defeat anyone like this? I stayed in my house for a while, not letting anyone in. Finally, after a long time, I heard a knock at the door. Zozo, it's Lex. We have something to show you. I reluctantly left the house, not wanting anyone to see me like this. But they needed someone, and I needed to be strong for them. Lex showed me that they had fixed up the crops, bred the animals, and improved the security by building some walls. Great. Thanks, Lex. That's not all. He turned me toward the statue of my dad, and I realized there was a smaller version next to it. It was of my mom. You'll get her back, Zozo. We believe in you. I didn't know what to say. I just nodded. And you are sure he is getting stronger? Yes, master. He is almost to his full form. 
Excellent! Then the plan is working! The mother will eventually bring him to us! Good work! Thank you, Master! On day 75 to 78, Puck the Honorable left me another note! I met him at our customary spot next to the river. Hello again, Zozo. What do you want, Puck? Someone's in a hurry. I have important information and a gift for you. I hear you are having some trouble with Horace's henchmen. I have some important information. His whereabouts. He actually lives very close to Horace. It's a bit hush-hush, but I have my ways. He handed me a map and I went to grab it. Be careful, Zozo. You don't know what you'll find there. Give me the paper, Puck. Do not lose yourself along the way. Remember what you are fighting for. I know what I'm fighting for, Puck. My mom has been taken by those creeps, and I intend on saving her. Then I'm going to put the henchmen and Horace in their rightful place. Puck handed me the paper. Good boy. Now go get your mother back. On day 79 to 84, I raced to the henchman's house. If there was a chance he had my mom, I was going to find her and defeat him once and for all. I followed the directions and found myself outside of a large wall. Inside, it was a modest looking house. This is where the henchman stays? Quite a cozy home he made for himself. I snuck around to see if he was inside, but I didn't see anything. Suddenly, I felt a gust of wind. The yak was standing right behind me. Come to retrieve your mommy. Coming after me was one thing, but involving my mom was a step too far. Your mother gave you everything, and you still can't save her. I'm going to beat you, Yak, for her! I felt a power grow within me, and I leveled up into a fully grown Hydra with 50 hearts. I got bigger, stronger, and even gained the Claw Strike ability. No, this isn't what was supposed to happen. Horus promised me I wouldn't be defeated by you. Be careful who you trust, henchman. And with a swipe of my claws, I defeated him. He burst into golden sparks and was gone. Zozo! I looked and saw my mother coming toward me. She'd managed to escape. Mom, did he hurt you? I'm fine. I'm so proud of you. Look at how strong you are. You look so much like your father did. I'm so glad you're okay. Come on, Mom. Let's get you back home. Oh, and before we go, I found this while I was imprisoned. I figured you might want it. It was a golden key. On days 85 to 89, my mom and I arrived back at the base. Everyone was so happy to see my mom, and they ushered us over to the statues. We almost finished it while you were gone, but we wanted you to put on the finishing touch. Freddy handed me a few glowstone blocks, which I added to my dad's statue, completing his fire breath. It was perfect. And I have more amazing news, Freddy. The golden key my mom found at the henchman's base. I think it's literally the key to getting into the Amethyst Crystal Cave. The henchman and Horace must have known that the Amethyst Sword could foil his grand plan. That's why he had the key to unlock the cavern. I've got to get over there now. I rushed out of the base toward the desert. As I arrived at the door, I felt my heart leap. This is it. It's finally coming together. I used the golden key to open the door. Here I go. I made my way down the dark tunnel, which eventually opened up into a cave system. Inside were hundreds of glowing amethyst crystals, all being watched over by a warden. This isn't going to be easy. I got right behind it, and before it knew what was happening, I let out a large burst of golden fire. He let out a terrible scream, but he didn't turn into a statue. I took a swipe at him with my claws instead. This time, he screamed in agony. I kept swiping, avoiding his blows as best as I could. My hearts were dwindling, but after just a few more moments, the warden was gone. Yes! I hurried and collected as many amethyst crystals as I could hold before hurrying out of the cavern. Time to end this, Horus. On days 90 to 94, I exited the cavern, blinking in the sunlight. Nice to see you again, little Hydra. I looked and saw Horus standing right in front of me. I was about to swipe him into oblivion when his magic froze me in place. Please, none of that. I just want to talk. I stared at him. What could you possibly want to talk to me about? You've gone out of your way to torture me. Don't you see, Hydra? I have strengthened you. You have become the Golden Hydra of the Prophecy. All thanks to me. You? You had nothing to do with it. Oh, don't even think for a minute that you would have accomplished anything without me. I made sure that you had difficulties so that you could learn. I made sure that you would eventually get the potion that would bring you to full power. You sabotaged your own henchmen? 
He was disposable at best. But think of what we can do together, little Hydra. We can rule this land together. Of course, it'll need to be destroyed before it can be built back up. But we can accomplish that if you follow me. Never. This is your last chance. Watch the world burn around you before I possess your mind or willingly serve me. I hissed at him. Very well. Somehow, Horus made all my amethyst that I'd worked hard and suffered to collect all disappear. Be sure to be at your best by the full moon, little Hydra. In the meantime, enjoy my wrath. I heard Horus laughing, and then it all went dark. On days 95 to 97, I woke up to pitch black. Where am I? Horus must have buried me underground. I looked at what I assumed was up and started to dig. It wasn't too deep, but by the time I saw sunlight, I was exhausted. I'm getting really tired of him. I tried to catch my breath, but then I noticed a note on the ground next to me. It read, Say goodbye to your honorable friend. My blood turned cold as I raced toward Puck's dungeon. No, 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 please don't let me be too late. When I got there, the whole place was demolished. I looked around, hoping to find anything. And I heard a groan from beneath some rocks. Puck! I moved the rubble and saw him on the ground. He was in really bad shape. I guess Horus figured out who my sources were. You're going to be okay, Puck. Let me help you up. Puck coughed. <coughs> Don't worry about me, Zozo. Go, protect your mom and your friends. He's heading to your base next. And with one last breath, Puck the Honorable passed. I let out a giant roar as I mourned my friend. But I had to get to my base. I needed to stop Horus before he caused any more destruction. On day 98, I arrived too late. What was once my base was now in ruins. I ran around frantically. Mom, Lex, Bradley, Freddy. I didn't hear anyone answer. I slumped down and was about to give up when I heard a small voice. Zozo? I looked up and saw my mom limping towards me. Freddy limped alongside her. Mom, Freddy, where is everyone else? A lot of them didn't make it out, Zozo. Bradley and Lex managed to run and hide with me, but nobody else was fast enough. We're lucky to be alive. I let out another loud roar in agony. Puck was gone. All the villagers and tortoises were gone. I had tried so hard to protect everyone, and I had failed. I felt my whole body slump. Hey, everything is going to be fine. Do you know why? Why? You are the Golden Hydra, and you are going to put a stop to Horus and his destruction. Mom slipped me something. It was a key. Horus dropped this before he left. It must be to his base. I looked at the key in shock. You are going to get back your amethyst crystals, finish the amethyst sword, and you will put a stop to all of this. Promise? Promise. On day 99, I headed to Horus's base. It had massive black walls, and inside there was a huge tower raising high into the sky. I carefully entered the front wall gate. To my surprise, the courtyard was completely empty. I explored a bit and located a back door, probably for the goons, and I used the key to get inside. Freddy, you're the best. I snuck up the passageway and went to open the door to the main chamber. A dread knight spotted me immediately. It's the Golden Hydra. I quickly took him out. So much for being stealthy. I was a Hydra after all, a golden one at that. It was hard to keep a low profile. I opened the chamber, and to my surprise, only Horus stood inside, smiling at me. Did you really think it would be that easy, Hydra? But at last, you're a day early. What exactly was your plan here? Give me back the amethyst crystals, and nobody has to get hurt, Horus. No. I was prepared this time. I smacked him back with my claws and grabbed for the crystals. Before he knew it, I was down the passageway. Stop that Hydra! I made it back to my base and hurriedly crafted the amethyst sword out of the two amethyst crystals and a stick. It was time to defeat Horus once and for all. It on day 100, I made my way back to Horus's base. Perfect, a dramatic ending, just like I wanted. Horus was waiting for me outside. Are you ready for your reign of terror to finally end, Horus? 
You're exactly where I want you, Zozo. When this battle is over, I'll take control of your body and use you as just another tool to take over this world. Not if me and the Amethyst Sword have anything to say about it. This time, I wasn't playing around. He fired a magical energy blast at me, but I was so strong now, I tanked it and ran right in. Oh, no, I may have made an error here. But that time for talk was over. I ran in and hit him with the Amethyst Sword again and again, weakening him a little more each time. He unleashed his guards on me, but they were taken care of quickly. Many sword swings later, when Horus was on the edge of defeat, I stopped attacking and stepped back for a moment. You can't win! I am an all-powerful sorcerer! Silence is golden, Horus! With one blast of my golden spit, Horus was turned into a harmless golden statue forevermore! At long last, the creatures of the overworld can breathe easy again! On day one, I spawned into the Baobab Savannah as the mighty electric tiger. Well, at least a baby version of an electric tiger. But if I work hard and train, I can live fully up to my electric tiger potential. Oh no you won't. I looked in front of me and saw a massive, hulking squall golem thundering towards me. He was so much bigger than me, the size difference was terrifying. Listen mister, I don't want any trouble. I'm Zozo, what's your name? My name's Mike, and I'm here to fight. But why? That doesn't even rhyme. Yes, it does. If I say it rhymes, it rhymes. I'm the strongest creature in the world. Nothing challenges me anymore, and the only way to relieve the boredom is getting into fights with anyone I can. But... No buts, weakling. I'll kick yours. Here's the deal, I'm gonna give you a hundred days. You better use them well, kid, and get as strong as possible, strong enough to have an interesting fight with me. Cause if you don't, I'm gonna find you and pound you until you're nothing more than a little electric tiger stain in the floor. Now run. Mike the Squall Golem didn't have to tell me twice. I turned and ran away as quickly as possible, while Mike just laughed at me. He seemed like my most formidable opponent yet. 100 days, I need to get real strong in that time, or Mike really is gonna destroy me. On day two, I continued running through the Baobab Savannah, not stopping until I was confident that Mike the Squall Golem was nowhere to be seen. Phew, that was a close one. If he'd attacked me in that state, I would have been a goner. I only have 10 hearts. I wonder if I have any special abilities. Without even realizing I could, I released a blast of electrical energy from my paw. The electricity is eliminated from me and charges up the air around me. That must have been one of my basic electric tiger abilities. Whoa, maybe I'm not as helpless as I thought. Wait, do I see a pear tree there? I should grab one. I grabbed a few pears and ate them. Even if my hunger was full, I just couldn't resist it. Things were looking up already. At least I wasn't going to be hungry. But my contentment didn't last for long. A scary plant-like whisperer rustled its way towards me. It wasn't as big as Mike, but it was definitely freaky. Oh no, I have a feeling I know who you work for. You feel correctly, Zozo. You really think you can beat Mike? He's the GOAT. GOAT? He's a squall golem. No, GOAT is an acronym. He is the greatest of all time. G-O-A-T. And that's why you've got no hope against him. Then why even bother coming after me? I didn't even want to fight. I'm gonna destroy you myself to save Mike his time. As the Whisperer approached me, I fired my energy blast, but it didn't even slow him down. All I could do was run away, knowing that even with my energy blast, I had no hope of fighting him. I was hiding behind a small clutch of trees, when suddenly, a wind collar teleported in front of me. Come with me if you want to live. Sure, let's go. I'll follow you. Wow, people normally have questions. Huh, let's go. The wind collar ran off, and I followed him without question, happy to finally have someone on my side. On day three, I continued following the wind collar deeper into the Baobab Savannah. He seemed to have confidence and power. It definitely made me feel safer around him. I've been waiting for you to arrive, Zozo. You have no idea how many people have anticipated this special day. Special? This doesn't feel that special. Aside from you saving my life from all the weird creeps who have been trying to attack me. Those weird creeps, as you aptly put it, have been bothering people for quite some time. But if you stick with me and my allies, we might be able to change that together. The wind collar led me to a small shack, leaving me to talk to its inhabitant, a mysterious figure called the Illusioner. 
So, you are the one the wind color selected, hmm? You don't appear all that strong, but perhaps that will change. I still don't understand what's happening here. Who are all of you people? And what does any of this have to do with me or that nasty squoggle on Mike? Wind color and I are just two members of a secret group called the Order of the Shield. For years we have made it our purpose to find and train a champion capable of destroying Mike and ending his reign of terror. If you accept this responsibility, we will do all we can to help you realize your destiny. Well, seeing as Mike is gonna come after me anyway, I agree to working with you. Good. Go with Wind Color. There is no time to waste. You must get strong enough to defeat Mike once and for all. From day four to day five, the Wind Color and I went deeper into the Baobab savanna. We didn't stop until we found an area that was big and flat enough to start constructing a base. First, I knocked down a tree and used its resources to construct a wooden pickaxe. I then mined into the ground and collected enough stone to create my first set of real tools, a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. From there, I gathered more stone and granite and made a basic base with a bed for myself and another one for the wind color to stay in with me. You've done great work here, Zozo. You show promise. With time, you will become a great warrior capable of taking on Mike and showing him what we are all capable of. I want to get stronger, wind color, but I'm not sure where to start. How can I become more powerful? I can help you with that, Zozo. I'll give you a portion of my power, and that will give you a foundation to build on. Stay still, please. The wind color fired an energy blast at me. The second it hit me, I started growing, becoming bigger, and had the ability to summon lightning strikes. I tried it out on some grass, and it was fantastic. Wow, I'm really starting to live up to my electric tiger name now. From day six to day eight, I decided to explore a new part of the savanna and test out my new powers for real. Energy blasts and lightning strikes, I'm a force to be reckoned with. And those powers would soon come in handy because I saw an innocent fungus thrower being attacked by that nasty whisperer who had attacked me earlier. I'm not gonna let this stand. As I ran in, the whisperer's attention was turned to me and the fungus thrower was able to escape. It was just me and my old enemy now. Hey, you ugly plant. You again? I didn't expect to see you after you ran off like a coward last time. I'm no coward whisperer, and I'm about to prove it. Talk is cheap, tiger boy. Let's go. I unleashed a powerful lightning strike on the whisperer, and this time it was completely destroyed. My electric tiger powers were coming in clutch already. Yo, fungus thrower, it's safe to come out now. I'm friendly, I promise. When I found him on the beach, the poor lad was shivering from fear. Dude, that was scary, but also amazing. I thought I was a goner, and then you came in like a superhero, like bam, zow, kapow. It was awesome. Well, I don't like to brag, but I guess it was pretty awesome. You're real good at this whole fighting bad guys thing, dude. Tell you what, I know there's a real nasty bad guy not far from here. Follow me, let's see if you can beat him. Sure, it couldn't hurt to try, let's go. From day nine to day 10, I followed the fungus thrower into the bamboo jungle until we reached a clearing. There, a freaky frozen zombie was waiting. Yikes, that thing seems unpleasant, but a promise is a promise. I ran in and unleashed a lightning strike against the frozen zombie, but it didn't seem to do anything other than annoy this particularly frosty member of the living dead. The frozen zombie chased me, and all I could do was run away as fast as I could. When I'd managed to lose the frozen zombie, I rendezvoused with the fungus thrower again. I'm really sorry for letting you down on this one, man, but I just don't think I'm strong enough to take down that frozen zombie yet. It's chill, dude. You did your best, and that's what matters. Tell you what, why don't you come and stay at my base while I get stronger? You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to hang out with you some more. <laughs> oh, you're too sweet, man. Let's do it. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with the fungus thrower. It was exciting to have another friend added to my team. Fungus thrower left to relax while I built a new room for him, along with the rooms for me and the wind collar. What do you think, buddy? This looks awesome, Zozo. I can't wait to hang out here. And hey, I got a little restless while you were building the bedroom, so I built a couple of upgrades of my own. Go take a look. The upgrades that the fungus thrower had created were truly awesome. He'd made a beautiful path connecting all the buildings and a storage room for the base with a furnace that I could use to smelt and forge metal. Say, that gives me an idea. I searched until I found a cave that might contain some valuable materials, and sure enough, right at the entrance, I found a rich vein of iron ore. 
I mined and collected a bunch of it before going back to my base. Once I was there, I used my furnace to smelt the ore into ingots. Then I made a full set of iron tools. I still had a little left over, so I used that to make an iron helmet and a chest plate. This looks awesome, so I've got shelter and weaponry covered. Now I need to make sure my food sources are sustainable too. I built a small chicken farm on my base and herded a few chickens inside so I'd never run out of eggs or yummy chicken. From day 13 to day 15, I spoke to my mentor, the Windcaller, and asked him if he knew any other ways I could train and get stronger. A very good question, Zozo. To become a better fighter, you need to fight and hone your battle tactics. I've heard reports of another one of those sinister whisperers wandering around the bamboo jungle. Go out there and defeat it to grow your strength. Because everything Windcaller had said so far hadn't led me astray, I followed his advice and went out to the bamboo jungle again. I searched until I found the whisperer that Windcaller had told me about. I will destroy you in the name of Mike! Not if I destroy you first, Whisperer! With my new iron sword, it wasn't hard to battle the Whisperer into submission. When the Whisperer was destroyed, it dropped a potion of strength onto the ground. Yes. Perfect timing! I was starting to feel super thirsty. I picked up the potion of strength and drank it, and I felt the change immediately. I started to get bigger, stronger, and my heart grew to 30. The wind caller was right. Fighting that Whisperer did make me stronger. From day 16 to day 19, I continued exploring the overworld until I came upon the Cypress Swamplands. It was a strange, mystical place, and the more I wandered around, the more I got the sense that something important was waiting for me here. And that feeling proved to be right when I came upon an ancient book of secrets laying around. I decided that it might be worth reading, so I flipped through until I found a section called How to Defeat Squall Golems. Wow, that's appropriate. A section read, The stony flesh of a squall golem may seem impenetrable. Even diamond swords and the strongest of arrows just seem to bounce off. But if one could obtain a sword of netherite, then the playing field would be evened. A netherite sword? I need to get my hands on one of those then. My moment of victory was interrupted by a pair of whisperers suddenly appearing and wandering towards me. They must have come here to stop me from reading this book of secrets. You overgrown weeds can't scare me! With my lightning strikes and energy blasts, the three whispers were destroyed for good! From day 20 to day 22, knowing that I needed a netherite sword to truly defeat Mike the Squall Golem, I went back to the mining cave looking for more material. Sadly, I couldn't find any diamonds or netherite down there, just more iron ore. I mined a bunch of it and went back to my base where I smelted it into ingots and made myself the rest of my iron armor. If you can't invest in your attacks, you might as well invest in your defense. My recent increase in strength reminded me of an old unsettled score. I needed to defeat the frozen zombie for my friend the fungus thrower. Time to send that zombie to its eternal resting place. I returned to the bamboo jungle and hunted down the frozen zombie that had given me trouble all those days ago. With my iron sword, I was able to defeat the nasty undead once and for all. It probably won't be long before I'm strong enough to take on Mike and win. I wouldn't be so sure, weakling. I turned and saw Mike himself was standing right behind me. I wanted to run, but this time I stood my ground. I'm not scared of you anymore, Mike. I know the secret. I just need to get my hands on a netherite sword. I'm a champion of the Order of the Shield. <laughs> What's so funny? You think you're the first champion. You think you're the only one who knows about netherite swords. I've destroyed a hundred foolish champions like you, and you'll make it a hundred and one. Mike punched me, taking off a frightening number of hearts. All I could do was run for my life. I was clearly still not strong enough to face him yet. From day 23 to day 26, I went back to my base and informed the fungus thrower that I defeated the frozen zombie of the bamboo forest. Way to go, Zozo! You've no doubt achieved a whole new level of strength from that battle! And I plan to get even stronger now that I was able to fulfill my promise to you. Oh yeah, buddy! I know you can! I knew that I needed stronger materials in my inventory if I really wanted to work my way up to that netherite sword, so I went digging for more iron in my mining cave. While there were still no diamonds to be found, the iron ore was plentiful. I helped myself to as much of the iron as I could carry and smelted a bunch of it down into some more ingots. I made a temporary smelting location to smelt the iron while I mined. I already had a set of iron tools and armor, so out of all the iron, I made an anvil so we can repair our gear when it loses durability. My pickaxe can be the first candidate to get repaired. Once I was done mining, I went above ground to my base where Windcaller was waiting for me. Zozo, I've given the base a new addition that will be sure to keep you safe while you build up your strength. That sure is nice of you. 
consider it my thanks for all the hard work you've put in so far. I went to see what the wind collar had added to the base and found a well-constructed security bunker to hide in, in case of invasion. This looks like it will come in handy. From day 27 to day 31, I was far away from the base, exploring the Cypress Swamplands when I had first learned about the existence of netherite swords. If I remember my last visit correctly, I also defeated a couple of Whisperers while I was here. The whole area looked totally peaceful now, without any of Mike's minions to be seen. As I was taking in the pleasant vibes, I was approached by a kindly Fletcher, who seemed rather happy that the Swamplands were free of baddies. Wow, wee zowie! You must be Zozo the Electric Tiger! I heard you took down those Whisperers some days ago! That's me! I'm the toughest, and only Electric Tiger around! That's wicked awesome! It's good to know that there are people out there looking for strength, who are also nice and willing to stand up for the weak! I will do my best to help those in need! I heard there were some other Whisperers skulking around and looking to challenge you! They must really want to stand up for that Mike guy. I can take them. Do you know where they are? Not right now, but they'd probably hunt me down and try to beat me up if they knew I told you that. Then they'd be right here in the swamp again. I know. What if you stayed at my base for a while? At least until I have my match with Mike. That way, I can protect you. The Fletcher agreed, and together we went back to my base where I added a base extension. I made a small outdoors library with a few couches to have a nice cozy place to relax. The books that I put on the shelves would teach me strategies and techniques for winning battles. Because knowledge is power! Later, I was approached by Windcaller, who had some bad news. Zozo, we have to come with you again. Mike's minions have discovered the Order of the Shield and are attacking its members. We need to check on the Illusioner before he could be next! Oh no, that sounds serious! Let's go! From day 32 to day 35, Windcaller and I crossed the Baobab savanna to reach the Illusioner's shack. When we found the place, it was too late. The shack was under attack by a Whisperer, and the Illusioner was desperately fighting for his life. You Order of the Shield fools can't win. Mike makes right. The saying is might makes right. What you said is just silly. You're calling us silly? Just for that, you're going to die. The Whisperer destroyed the Illusioner right before our eyes! You monsters! Talk about pathetic! Is this all the Order of the Shield is made of? You're dead wrong! I'm Zozo, the Electric Tiger! I am the champion, and I'll show you how strong I am! I called down a lightning strike, getting the Whisperer's attention and dealing a bunch of damage in the process! With a few swings of my iron sword, I made that Whisperer pay for what it did to the Illusioner! More Whisperers emerged from the edges! I was so angry, I didn't even need to use my energy blasts to bring the pain and take them all down! When the battle was over, Windcaller and I planned what our next move would be! We need to be on the lookout for any other mobs that are working for Mike! Curse him! We were too late to save the Illusioner from his rampage! We'll keep an eye out for the other surviving members of the Order of the Shield, and once we're together, we'll help you become the strongest champion you can be! From day 36 to day 39, I returned to the bamboo jungle so I could practice all my most powerful fighting moves in a safe place where none of my friends would get hurt. I was tossing around energy blast when I blasted away some bamboo and found an iron golem hiding nearby. Whoa! Easy with those blasts. You could knock somebody out with those. My apologies. I didn't know you were here. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. Oh, no. It's okay. I actually have been searching for someone strong enough to defeat the ruthless roaming ravager. If it's a worthy opponent that gives me a chance to test my skills, then I'm 100% game. Where is this ravager anyway? I'll show the way, oh mighty electric tiger. I was brought to another part of the bamboo forest where the ruthless roaming ravager was running around. It was my time to bring that bad boy down. I fired some energy blasts from my paws, and the Ravager responded by jumping over to me and making a few attacks. I countered with my iron sword. The battle raged on for a while, but I knew from the start I would come out on top. And I was right! I returned to the Iron Golem to tell him that I had successfully defeated that rascally Ravager. Ha! Huh, you really are one tough tiger. That's for sure. From day 40 to day 43, I was in the base and decided to see how the fungus thrower was doing. It looked like he had been hard at work decorating the base with all sorts of tiger patterned banners and paintings. This base looks absolutely awesome now. Good job, fungus. I'm glad you like it. I was just sprucing the place up in preparation for the pigs I invited over. You invited pigs? Yep, I invited some pigs because I thought they might oink joy themselves here. That's a bad pun, but not a bad idea. I say yes. 
Hamtastic! I mean, fantastic! The pigs that Fungus Thrower invited arrived soon after and were the life of the party. I even got to train my defenses against their classic pig pile technique. After entertaining our fine piggy guests for a while, I went for a walk out in the base and ran into Flusher. Everything alright, Flusher? I'm worried about my home back in the Cypress Swamplands. Do you think you could go check on it just to be safe? Sure, buddy. It's the least I can do for a friend. From day 44 to day 49, I went back to the Cypress Swamplands like Fletcher wanted me to. I was expecting there might be a few whispers milling about, but I never imagined that I'd see Mike himself. What up, Tiger? Ready to take another shot at the big man? Mike, this should be between you and me. What you did to the Order of the Shield was unforgivable. Nah, no way. I've been beefing with those bozos since long before you showed up. And if you're the chosen champion they kept talking about, then I had to take them down before you become any stronger. So you did it because you're afraid I'll get stronger than you? Well, now you've made sure it'll happen. I will beat you, Mike, one of these days. You want to make this personal, huh? All right, let's make it personal. See if you can take on my man, the Piglin Brute. To my surprise, Mike ran off and stuck me fighting with one big mean mob that he called the Piglin Brute. It sure did live up to its name. I'm about to show you why they call me the Piglin Brute. Because I'm brutal. Yeah, I already got that. Put up your dukes, Electric Tiger. He slammed me with an attack that was definitely brutal. But thankfully, my iron helmet was able to soak up some of the damage. I traded blows using my sword and started to wear him down. But the knockback of his attacks was giving me some trouble. This will be a tough fight. From day 50 to day 53, I had started to use my energy blast to continue to deal damage to the Piglin Brute. He didn't show much signs of tiring, but then again, neither did I. I can see why the Order of the Shield was impressed by you, but you can't really be the champion who will defeat Mike because I'm about to take you down. Wouldn't bet on it, Brute. I launched a couple of strikes at the Brute, then I hit him with my sword and knocked him off balance so I could defeat him with some classic Electric Tiger Energy Blast. Bye bye, Brute. You were my biggest and meanest opponent yet, but I've won this round. The Piglin Brute disappeared, and I soon found an item that he dropped. It was a map leading to Mike's Fight Club. This is quite a discovery. I didn't know whether Mike expected me to find this or not, but either way, this meant that I could go to his base whenever I wanted. From day 54 to day 57, I cleared the Cypress Swamplands of all remaining hostile mobs so that Fletcher wouldn't have to worry anymore. The last one in the area was especially tough, a Vindicator who could take a lot of hits from my Iron Sword. I really had to stay on my guard the whole fight, relying on my new combat strategies that I had been practicing. Sure enough, I was able to win with plenty of hearts to spare. The Vindicator even dropped a Netherite Ingot, which was the first step to the Netherite Sword that I'd need to defeat Mike. I quickly returned to the base to tell Fletcher the good news. So, the Swamplands are safe? They sure are. You mean that you found a Netherite Ingot just like that? I sure did. That's some kind of coincidence, huh? It's no coincidence. It's a sign. You were meant to be the champion of the Order of the Shield. It's your destiny. Well, in that case, I better make the most of this chance and get some diamonds so we can eventually make a Netherite Sword. You can do it, Zozo. From day 58 to day 62, I made a much needed expansion to the chicken farm so that it could hold more livestock. It was just in time too, because I was able to round up more chickens for food. An electric tiger's gotta eat to keep his energy up and delicious chicken tenders are what's on the menu. Next, I delved down to the mining cave to have another look for the diamonds I would need to craft a diamond sword. I had to explore pretty deep, but soon enough, I managed to get my pickaxe into some diamonds. There's many diamonds here. I might believe in destiny after all. I mined for a while and found more than enough diamonds to make the diamond sword, which I planned on using as the foundation for the netherite sword I'd be making later. I used the rest of the diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe and a full set of diamond armor for myself. Once I was satisfied with the amount of diamonds I had amassed, I returned to the surface of the base and met up with Windcaller. Hey, Windcaller, I've crafted a diamond sword. That's excellent, Zozo. We should celebrate in the brand new super amazing party room that I just built. Oh, wow, no way. A party room. I love parties. While I had been down in the mines, Windcaller had given the base its most exciting feature yet, a decorated room for hosting parties. I tried out the dance floor and had a really good time. 
From day 63 to day 66, I was hanging out at the base with Fungus Thrower, discussing ways for me to become even stronger. If I could train in a new location, maybe I'd be able to discover some new fighting moves. I actually know just the place. If you train in the harsh sunlight of the desert, you'll increase your strength in no time. How do I find the desert? I'll show you the way on your map. The fungus thrower marked the desert as a location on the map I received from the fallen piglin brute. It looked like it was on the way to the biome where Mike's fight club could be found. I should get used to that path while I'm out there. I went to the desert and felt the sun beating down on me. This would be a good place to train, and I was in the mood for a fight with a scary opponent. Across the dunes, I saw one scary-looking wither skeleton. I moved towards him with my sword drawn, ready for battle. Hey, you, wanna fight Zozo the Electric Tiger? No, thank you. I don't wanna fight, especially not a tough customer like you. Okay, I can respect that. We won't fight. Did you think just because I'm scary looking that I'd want to fight? You really shouldn't judge people by their outward appearances. Yeah, that was my bad. I'm very sorry about that, friend. Lesson learned. It happens to me a lot, I'm afraid. Just the other day, a Zoglin tried to pick a fight with me. I told him, no, wait for a strong person who wants to fight. Well, if that Zoglin wants a fight, I'll fight him. I came here to train anyway. From day 67 to day 70, the friendly wither skeleton brought me to meet the Zoglin, a dangerous opponent who was also looking for a challenging fight. The Zoglin agreed to fight me one on one so we could test each other's strength. Before the fight began, the wither skeleton took me aside so we could have a quick discussion. Are you sure you can win, Zozo? I didn't mean to put you in danger. I think I've got a chance, but thanks for being concerned. No, thank you for fighting this battle for me. That's what a strong person does. Now I'm gonna go kick some Zoglin butt. The fight between myself and the Zoglin was off to an exciting start when the Zoglin charged straight at me. I dodged his powerful tusks and hit with my sword while his back was turned. The Zoglin countered by hitting me with his tusks. I lost a few hearts, but I was still in the fight. I fired some energy blasts and used my signature lightning strike to deliver the last blow, defeating the Zoglin. Zozo, you did it! I am the Electric Tiger Zozo! Remember the name! From day 71 to day 74, I had completely left the desert behind and was traveling through a new biome, the Eroded Badlands. According to the Piglin Brutes map, this was the same biome where the entrance to Mike's Fight Club could be found. The map also says you can find more of my Zozo videos by searching Zio Zio in the YouTube search bar. You should try it out! I followed the directions on the map further into the eroded badlands and I could see Mike's fight club in the distance. Just you wait, Mike. I'll fight you one of these days. I heard that, Zozo. Suddenly, Mike was right next to me and he was looking as strong as ever. You shouldn't have said that, Sparkplug. Now I'm gonna give you a taste of my super special punch, the Mike Spike. Oh no, I forgot that today is one of those days. Mike Spike! He punched me and my heart started to deplete. Thank goodness I was wearing diamond armor. I drew my diamond sword and swung at him, but the damage it did was really low. You're still weak, kitty cat. No way. Will I need a netherite sword to even stand a chance? I ran away from the fight, retracing my steps through the eroded badlands. I still wasn't strong enough to beat him. From day 75 to day 78, I followed the map home to my base and went directly into the bunker to work out. Somehow, I couldn't find the energy to train, probably because I was disappointed that I had to run away from Mike. Mike was the strongest in the world, and I still didn't have the netherite sword I would need to actually challenge him. From what he said before, even that might not be enough. Cheer up, Zozo. You have our strength too, so don't give up. It was Windcaller. He had come into the bunker to check on me and raise my spirits. Thanks, Windcaller. I'm feeling like I'm weak today, so I really needed to hear that. Follow me. I'll show you something that might also help. There was now a new watchtower at the front of the base where we could look out at the Baobab Savanna from. All of a sudden, I feel a whole lot better, Windcaller. Now I remember what I'm fighting for. You are the champion, Electric Tiger Zozo. Don't forget it. Now that I was feeling better, I went to go visit Fletcher. Hey there, Fletcher. Zozo, I got you this special magic apple to help make you strong enough to face Mike. Well, an apple a day, as they say. I scarfed down the apple and began to grow into an even bigger electric tiger with 60 hearts. In addition to bigger damage and more health, I could also perform a special whirlwind attack. Mike won't know what hit him. From day 79 to day 84, I was feeling strong and decided to go back to the eroded badlands. This time, there was no sign of Mike, so I fought some skeletons to test my newfound strength. I wanted to prove to myself that I had what it takes to become the strongest. 
A nearby weaponsmith saw me defeat those mobs and thought that I was pretty cool, so he offered to upgrade my weapons. This is my chance to get a netherite sword. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just give me your diamond sword and your netherite ingots and I'll take care of the rest. I gave the weaponsmith what he needed and waited in anticipation for him to finish my super cool netherite sword. It didn't take him that long, and I could tell just by swinging it that this netherite sword was the most powerful weapon that I'd ever had. Thank you, weaponsmith. I promise to use what you've given me for the side of justice. Go on and save the world. Every weaponsmith dreams of creating a hero's weapon. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to the base to show the others that I had obtained the netherite sword and found that it was being attacked by whisperers. So this is where you ran away to, coward? We're gonna make you feel real silly for leaving Mike in the middle of a fight. I battled the whisperers with all my might, testing the edge of my netherite sword. These minions had given me trouble in the past, but now I was so much stronger than them that they were barely a threat. I easily defended the base and prevented any further damage to the structures. Oh man, this guy is actually way too strong. Maybe I should leave this one to Mike. He'll know how to win. Intimidated by my strength, the Whisperer stopped fighting. It was now their turn to run away. Serves you right for trying to mess with my friends. You'll have to deal with this electric tiger now. I chased the Whisperers through the Baobab Savannah until my base was far away. Never come back! A villager who saw me bravely face off against Mike's henchmen came over to cheer me on. You're the electric tiger, the second strongest being in the world. Soon to be the most strongest, or first strongest, whichever sounds better. Do you think you can spare some of your strength and give me a hand building a bridge over the river? Sure thing, villager. I used the materials the villager gave me to finish building the bridge across the river. Thanks, Sozo. Only a truly strong hero could do something like that. From day 90 to day 94, I continued onward across the desert and through the eroded badlands until I saw on the map I was getting close to Mike's arena. I could see one of the whisperers who had attacked my base lingering nearby, and I drew my netherite sword in preparation for a battle. I'm here to see Mike. I'm going to challenge him for the title of strongest being in the world. Oh no you didn't! You're gonna need to get this guy first! He's the second strongest in the whole world! An armored pillager showed up, taking the place of the Whisperer as my opponent! I've heard people say that you're the second strongest in the world. Not true, because that's me! I've never beat Mike, but I'll beat anyone who isn't Mike. You won't beat me! I'll take your title, then I'll take on Mike! Then bring it on, Zozo the Electric Tiger! The armored villager waited for me to make the first move, which I did, using my netherite sword! He blocked the attack and countered with a strike from his own weapon! I lost quite a few hearts and had to dodge back to avoid the worst of his attacks! I used my energy blast to keep him at a distance, but his armor was as tough as mine! You're pretty strong, pillager! Are you ready to give up and run away? No way! I'll never back down from a fight again! From day 95 to day 97, I continued to battle against the armored pillager, utilizing all my specially trained techniques to try and gain an advantage. Have another lightning strike! I can handle your lightning strikes all the live long day, Zozo. We'll see about that! I circled around the armored pillager with my whirlwind attack and delivered sword strikes wherever I could. I was still having trouble cracking the second strongest fighter's armor, but I figured I could soften him up for a lightning strike if I just kept attacking. With my whirlwind active, I spun around and unleashed my lightning strike. With that attack, the pillager surrendered. The electric tiger defeated the armored pillager and became the true second strongest in the world. No, I couldn't achieve my dream of becoming the strongest in the world. Why did you want to become the strongest so bad? I'm doing it to protect my friends and myself from Mike. It started that way for me too, but when I realized I would never win, I became his follower. All the people who believed in me before became sad and stopped being my friends, but they went on to form the Order of the Shield. Wait, you were the original champion! No, I was just the guy who tried to be a champion before there was a champion. You've got to be better than me, Zozo. I will, Armored Pillager. I'll defeat Mike and become the strongest in the world, once and for all! On day 98, I went back to the base to tell everyone that I would soon be facing off against Mike for the ultimate title. I went to visit Windcaller first, who was standing at the top of the watchtower. Thanks to the strength you gave me at the start, I was able to become the champion that you always thought I could be. It was like I said long ago. My strength was the foundation, but you built it into something better and made it your own. 
Thank you for believing in me. Here is a bit more of my strength in the form of a potion. Drink it before you go into battle. Next, I met with Fletcher outside of the chicken farm. I wanted to assure him that once I was the strongest, I would use my strength to protect all of the biomes from evil. Very soon, the world will be safe. I'm glad I was able to help your quest for strength, Zozo. You gave me what I needed when I needed it most, and I'm so grateful that I was able to meet you. Make the most of your magic powers. The special techniques will be the key to victory. After Fletcher, there was only one last friend to thank, the fungus thrower who was chilling in the party room. This room is the best room. Other than a mushroom, of course. <laughs> That's a fungus. I look forward to hanging out after I beat Mike once and for all. It'll be a big celebration. On day 99, I made my way back to the eroded Badlands and saw the first glimpses of Mike's base. I approached, and there were the Whisperers waiting to stand in the way. Move aside, small fry. I'm here for Mike. You guys don't need to be involved. The Whisperers bolted for the hills, and I ran straight into Mike's base. On day 100, I walked into Mike's fight club with my netherite sword drawn. Mike, I'm here to fight. The big golem himself, Mike, appeared before me in order to fight. Zozo the Electric Tiger, you fought all the other strong people in the world, and now you think you can steal my crown. I do. I'm gonna make sure that you are put down for the count. Lots of people have said that to me before, and I've beaten them all. I didn't get to be the strongest because I made excuses. I just kept fighting and winning. But you didn't fight the Whisperers when they started going after the Order of the Shield. You didn't want a champion to fight you. I don't care what those weaklings do or what fights they get into. All that matters is the fight between me and you. That's how it's always been, destined champion. Let's do this in a place worthy of this showdown. Mike left, and I ran after him. He turned into his fighting arena. I followed him in when he hit at the entrance and slammed his golem fist into my body. It was the Mike Spike, his signature opening move. I drew my netherite sword and dealt some real damage to him for the first time. I followed up with a whirlwind and a lightning strike. Mike threw me across the fight club. Then he jumped and slammed onto me, dealing a lot of damage. He tried to attack again, but I hit him with an energy blast. He caught him off guard, and I was able to land a bunch of other energy blasts after. Then I remembered to drink up the strength potion Windcaller gave me. I felt much stronger now. As we stood there, swinging away at each other, hit after hit, I was wearing the golem down. Eventually, one of us fell. Mike actually dropped. Yes, Zozo the Electric Tiger wins. I had completed the 100-day challenge to defeat the strongest being in the world. I had won. 